in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I believe in the power of the word that's why we sing the word that's why we declare the truths of scripture very powerful song hallelujah Job 42 and verse 10. We're still praying. Job chapter 42 and verse 10. Job was at a point where he was so frustrated. Everything had turned around in his life for bad. And then the Bible tells us in verse 10, it says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave him twice. Say twice. That's restoration. Giving you what you lost is not restoration, that's progress. When God gives you double, as they say, for your trouble. It says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Lift your voice and pray for the person you're holding his or her hands and say, Father, we prophesy this song, restore. Restore the joy. Restore relationships. Restore mantles. Restore anointings. Restore spiritual dimensions. Restore hunger. Restore. We prophesy. Restore. Restore finances. Restore influence. Lord restore restore please pray from the depth of your heart hallelujah Still holding their hands, I'd like you to pray over tonight's meeting. Lord, my spirit is open, my mind is open. Give me an encounter tonight, an encounter with your word. Give me an encounter. Give me an encounter, oh God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One of the greatest needs of believers is understanding. Understanding is what gives you access to the experience of victory. Can we cry for understanding in one minute? Lord, grant me understanding. I've been hearing these truths, but give me understanding. The Bible says the entrance of thy word giveth light. Those outside pray. Those following online pray. Wow. 
Hallelujah. The last prayer point and then you sit down. I'd like you to prophesy to your destiny and declare the word of the Lord. Declare that your destiny must become that which God has declared in his word. Go ahead. The Bible says, declare ye that thou mayest be justified. Don't watch others pray. Prophesy. Son of man, can this destiny live again? And he said, prophesy. We speak to our destinies in Christ. Decree and declare. No failure, no defeat. A life of total victory, total victory. Absolute victory on all sides in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God tonight, we lift up our eyes to you. You're the only one who can open scripture. We pray that you will open up our eyes. Not just the word, but open our eyes. Give us understanding. In the name of Jesus, grant us grace tonight and let your word bless us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. I saw a very powerful vision this morning. Just woke up from sleep, minding my business. I wasn't even praying, wasn't doing anything. And all of a sudden, I didn't even know I was in a vision. I stepped into a very magnificent auditorium. Very, listen, magnificent auditorium. And when I entered that auditorium, it was like I was outside and I was inside at the same time. And it was like the Lord was causing me to pass through. And I saw many faces here that I know. But the thing was not the auditorium the entire the garments that people were wearing was pure gold pure gold crystal gold listen i was amazed because it's not just the kind of gold that you see pure gold i saw people that i knew in the physical were even struggling in my mind i said what are these people doing with gold pure gold nobody was even concerned about the gold people were just worshiping god some were lying down but I saw pure gold. Listen, immediately I saw that. Then when I returned from that vision, I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? You see, let me tell you. Gold in scripture is associated with glory and royalty and wealth. When God begins to speak like this, it is his revelation about your destiny and what he's determined to do. Now, there is no guarantee that because it was seen, you will get there. Are we together now? Honestly speaking, it was only when I came back to myself that I believed it was a vision. When I, I'm talking of splendor, gold, I understand what the Bible says that silver can become dust. There is a level. I, I, have you seen a level where nobody is a beggar? Nobody is. It's not like somebody competing with another. How much is your rapper? People, and the, I noticed this in the vision. People were not even concerned about, you know, all these things that people think about. It was extreme worship. A magnificent auditorium. Thousands of people. Flags of nations and people were worshiping. Let me tell you, if the mouth of the Lord declares this, his spirit will make it happen. Yeah. Hmm. We have grown up in environments that have cultured us into believing we will never amount to anything. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are largely victims of the programmings and the limitations of our environment. So when God utters a word in his majesty, I hope you know that every man speaks according to his ability. If a little boy says, I will buy you a car, you don't say amen. Because you know that the child may have desire, but there's no ability. Before God speaks or shows something, he searches whether he can make it happen. 
So if at all he declares anything, it's up to us to believe. Can we turn this vision I just saw into a prayer for yourself and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, you have revealed your desire for me. I will step into it. Splendor. The Bible says that we have been made unto our God, kings and priests and we shall reign and we shall reign it didn't say we shall struggle and we shall reign and we shall reign it says that they who have received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness he said they shall reign lord i believe Lord, I believe. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. I began challenging us last week about a mystery that God showed me you see one of the one of the blessings of the apostolic office in fact it's not just a blessing it is also the proof is that you are committed a certain dimension of spiritual reality aside from spiritual governance you are granted access to a dimension of spiritual reality and God allows you and mandates you to communicate that reality to the territory you have been assigned to. that if you sustain the humility to listen to any man that God has committed these two things happen to you number one illumination is granted unto you number two the capacity it says as many as received him even unto them that believed in his name he gave them the power to become when you believe it and you receive it then power is released to become that experience hallelujah and so i have taught us again that in this kingdom dominion is a product of our comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom this is what we call the word of god the word of god is many things but primarily a compendium of the thoughts of god comes from the word logos the logos of god the thoughts of a man carefully calculated thoughts an extension of that word word means the mindset of a man are we together now so when you study the word of god you are accessing the mindset of god the wisdom of god and the bible says let this mind philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 he says to permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus there was an understanding there was a comprehension in the christ that granted him access to all of the possibilities that were produced and the Bible says that if that mind is in you it can cause you regardless of what limitation to produce that result hallelujah this Bible was given to us as a gift holy men the Bible says wrote as they were inspired of the Spirit now the Bible in itself theologically speaking still contains the imperfection of the writers and the imperfection of the interpreters and some of the errors that have happened as a result of translation from year to year you see obvious um, limitations things that were added that should not be added and things that were not added that should be added but regardless of the limitation the word of god is still intact the word of god is not 66 books no 
66 books are the vehicles that are used to communicate the word of God. Are we together now? If all you have in your lifetime is one chapter of the Bible, you can access the word of God through it. It is not just in reading Genesis to Revelations that you access the word of God. That vastness is given as a symbol of God's mercy and grace so that regardless of how you come, what angle you come, you will still access the word of God. You have to understand what I'm saying. There are people who may never have the privilege of holding 66 books in their hands, yet they can have access to the word of God. The word of God is not the reading of the book, for there are different alterations to different Bible versions. I don't want to go into all those theological debates. There are many books that are, are argued whether it should be added to the book or not. And, and people argue as it will, not, it will not change the word of God. The word of God is eternal. Are we together now? So it doesn't matter what error in interpretation. That's too small a reason to alter the word of God. The Bible says the word of God liveth and abideth forever. Liveth and abideth forever. Are we together now? When you encounter the Lord Jesus Christ at salvation, scripture tells us that we are born of the word. Born of the word. Born of the word. But much more than being born of the word, the Holy Spirit, when he comes into the life of a believer, his primary assignment is to begin to open the truths of God's word. Jesus was speaking, John 15, John 16. He began to talk to us about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. When you read John 16 and verse 12, it was, it was, it was said that he, when he comes, he will guide us. The Holy Spirit guides you. He is the spirit of truth. But he, he will guide you into all truth. He will coordinate your understanding to ensure that you are not in error. Hallelujah. Listen. The quality of my life and your life is dependent on the word of God. But not just the word of God alone. I shared it last week. Remember, our access to it first then our ability to engage the word. This word of God issue is a very serious issue. Two scriptures all said the same thing. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. We are talking about a life and death issue, brothers and sisters. We are not talking about something that you can live without. It says, and he humbled them. Afterwards, go to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and all of that and all of that so that he might make you know that what? Man does not live by bread only, but by every word. How many? every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. That means both the quality and the quantity of your life, listen, is dependent on the word of God. When Jesus came, give us Matthew chapter 4 please and verse 4. Satan was attempting to tempt Jesus and here was his reply. But he answered and said, it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God that means the cure for the death that happens in anyone's life whether sickness destiny career is the cure is in the mouth the word of God the word of God. You hear people talk about the word of God, but many believers have not given the kind of attention that is required to produce the results they desire. The word of God. Man. So we are talking about an issue of life and death here. That if a man in his lifetime does not access the word of God, he will die both spiritually and physically. The secret... To the mysteries of God 
is in his word the secret to the multifaceted dimensions of God's possibilities is hidden in his word the secret to a life of wealth and prosperity is hidden in the word of God the secret for restoration just like the worship team beautifully sang the word of God the secret to breaking the bands of witchcraft and wickedness is hidden in the word of God but you see believers pay very little attention to the word of God and there is a reason for that it's not just that they do not want to pay attention to the word of God we preachers have not been able to demonstrate the potency of the word of God we will rather sit from morning till night in people's offices begging them than to stand and access the word of God we will rather bribe and do all kinds of things and cut corner it is because we have not been taught the potency of the word of God and its ability to change everything the word of God is reliable the word of God is dependable the word of God is worthy of your trust and your commitment please don't forget this the word of God is reliable the word of God is faithful it would deliver as promised if I ask you to see me tomorrow and I will buy you lunch the first thing you do is to gauge whether I am reliable whether I am trustable and whether or not I have the ability to be able to provide you lunch so when you think and say lunch uh, no matter what you should be able to afford it then you believe me is that true everything brothers and sisters declared by the word of God for your destiny is doable by the word the word of God is not a scam the word of God is not some fraud some trickster the word of God is not a religious system of indoctrination that just makes men identify with a deity so there are many of them and you choose the one that is most reliable no the Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away listen carefully heaven and earth will pass away it says but the word of God remains eternal I do not trust anything that is not built upon the word I don't care how solid it looks you are watching a mirage it will evaporate the vicissitudes of life will force it to move away are we together it says that he that heareth my sayings and doeth them I will liken to a man that built his house on a rock is the issue is not the house the issue is what it was built on brothers and sisters our lives are in a big risk because we are building our lives on visions we are building our life on emotions building our lives on uncle connection degrees building our lives on on lottery building our lives on business building our lives on money building our lives on intelligence that's a risk it's the same thing as sitting in a car and driving backward with your eyes closed how safe is that yet the risk we are taking by ignoring the word of god is worse than that and we do it every day for some it's been so all their life my assignment is to bring you to a point where you appreciate the invincibility of the word of god my assignment is to indoctrinate you to bring you to a point where you are you become one experientially with the word that your life is built upon the word brothers and sisters i give you a guarantee you will never fail i don't want to know what is happening in your life you will never fail hallelujah John chapter 1 and verse 1 the Bible says John in his gospel was teaching he said in the beginning when your uncle was not there listen carefully when the university was not there when no business idea was there when no seminar was there in the beginning 
when there was no customer in the beginning where there was no producer in the beginning where there was no lecturer it says in the beginning was the word the word is ancient in the beginning was the word and the word as a person was with God and the word himself was God verse 2 says that the same was in the beginning with God verse 3 he says how many things please talk to me how many things all things were made by now when the Bible tells you all things were made by the word you should pay attention because that means everything that is a vacuum in your life can be made by the word your finances can be made by the word it's not there the word is what will make it the ministry can be made by the word the home can be made by the word in the beginning was the word he said all things were made by him and without him ha, this is a revelation already was not anything made that was made that means if it ever appeared the word of god made it happen this for me is healing from every fear this is healing from every envy because the bible says nothing ever appears until the word of god births it brothers and sisters if you ever see a human being on earth the womb of a woman produced it it is not the womb and something else it is the womb alone even if machines are constructed it is in the similitude of the womb the womb is the authorized channel for reproducing another human being the word is the authorized channel for making things appear and without him all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made now listen the bible never said all things were made and will never be made again the creative potency of the word is still intact the word is still making destinies the word is still making wealthy people the word is still bringing people to the place of the anointing all things were made by him all things the bible says he upholds all things please listen he upholds all things by the word of his power he upholds all things by the word of his power the word of God is a matter of life and death the word of God is not the issue of Christianity the word of God is not the issue of a preacher or a preacher's wife or a preacher's child listen the word of God there are many people business people who claim that they don't need to know anything about the world all they need is just idea and connection there are many students all they need is to be able to read and cram there are several people in life who have not yet seen the need for the word in their lives that you preach the word does not mean you have received it you are just being a nice man of God it doesn't mean you're a believer a believer is not one who preaches the word a believer is one who the word of God has entered him preaching the word does not mean you believe the word I know many people who say many things that are not their convictions including books that have been written first Peter chapter 1 and verse 23 in his epistle Peter is teaching us something first Peter chapter 1 and verse 23 first Peter help us media chapter 1 and verse 23 it says being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God which does what liveth and abideth forever no uncle abides forever no system abides forever history and archaeology chronicles many kingdoms that have risen and fallen many systems of government that have risen and fallen but the bible says the word of god liveth and abideth forever the word of god is the only way to commit god to the affairs of your life the word of god is not one of the ways it is the only way an individual 
a believer can commit God to the affairs of his life you ignore the word of God you will pity yourself and just become emotional believing that God is in the affairs of your life many of we young men are trying to build our lives without the word of God with our pride and arrogance believing that we can believe we can build our lives many people are building homes without the word of god many people are building financial destinies without the word of god when you talk about the word of god they don't exactly refuse it they just they are passive about it they have not seen how to engage it god's word is a compendium of all the possibilities that are resident in God. Please write it down. God's word is a compendium. God's word is a compendium of all, not some, all the possibilities that are resident in God. God's word is a compendium of all the possibilities that are resident in God. There are many things that the word of God can do. A number of them, not all of them, a number of them were chronicled in this Bible. The 66 books are a representation, just a sample of what God can do. The Bible does not give the picture of all he can do with the stories. The stories are finite. The power of God is infinite. Meaning that if the Bible were to be written continually, there are more things that we'll see about God. The Bible says many miracles Jesus did, which were not recorded in this scripture, but this has been written because it is enough to make us believe. Hallelujah. The Bible is a compendium of all the possibilities. In this Bible, impossible situations were turned around. In this Bible, sick people were healed. In this Bible, God took people from the dunghill. In this Bible, farmers became prophets. In this Bible, prostitutes became the great grandmothers of Jesus. In this Bible, God turned around families. In this Bible, money failed and God turned the economic situation not of individuals of nations. In this Bible, men lost things and received it back. In this Bible, God stepped in miraculously. In this Bible, angels fought for men. So that when you see it, you can have a, a consolation that the word of God is reliable. Are we together? The word of God is dependable. The word of God is trustable. You can throw your life to it. I believe the word of God with all my heart. I will be foolish today to ever say I do not believe the word of God. But the missing link for many people is that they do not know that the word of God does not work automatically. Let's walk this thing now. This is where the foundation of many believers confusion comes somehow they believe that if the word of God is powerful and potent it should be able to work regardless of my impute that thing I believe with all my heart is a doctrine of demons the Bible says that the spirit speaketh expressly that in the end times many shall come and be deceived and they shall give heed to strange doctrines and that includes the doctrines of demons one of it is the misconception of the operation of the word this is what i want to drum into your spirit the operation of the word how the word works hallelujah 
The word of God does not work automatically. It was Jesus himself that taught us in the parable that a man, the man was good. The seed which was the word of God was good. The Bible says that he planted all kinds of seeds. Some fell by the wayside, some on thorns. Is that true? Some on a rocky ground and some on good soil. Very good word, accurate seed. But there were some soils that made the word of God not to produce to the extent that birds were able to come and carry the seed. They were not afraid. They ate it. Listen to Jesus' own interpretation. He said that the seeds that fell by the wayside are those that immediately they hear. He says Satan comes. Satan is not afraid of the word. Satan is afraid of your understanding and you're engaging it don't you ever make a mistake of lying to yourself that just because you have the word of god the devil will run away have you forgotten that he was lucifer the light bearer satan was the custodian of the mysteries of god it was his office in heaven satan does not fear the word brothers and sisters when Satan came to Jesus, he used it is written. Good student of the word. Satan is never, ever, your access to the word does not scare the devil. It is your understanding and the capacity to release your faith to it. That's what paralyzes the gates of hell. That you have a word of healing does not mean you will be healed. That you have a word of prosperity does not mean you will prosper. That you have a word of prophecy over your life does not even mean that things will be all right. Is God helping us tonight? Please, I beg you in the name of Jesus, I want you to listen to me. If you listen to what I'm teaching you, I promise you, for some of you, it will be a matter of days. You will watch things turn around in your life. This thing works. It's just that we are engaging it inaccurately. That's why it's not producing the desired results. The word of God does not work automatically. No, sir. They had the word just like we did. But the word did not profit them. If you do not profit in business, what happens to you? You lose. There's nothing like neutral. So if the word of God does not profit a man, it means on account of that word, he can lose some things. Yes, it is the word, the correct word. Jonah carried a word from God, entered a boat with the word, made people to lose everything with the word in him because the word was wrongly engaged. The word was from Nineveh and he carried a correct word and ran against God and people suffered. That you are holding the word of God and handling it wrongly may even be the reason why certain things are not going well. Hmm. Are we together? If Moses never had an encounter with God, he would have been spared. But Moses saw certain dimensions of the world and God would not tolerate certain things from him. And said, no Moses, your level of encounter with me should not allow this unbelief. You are not entering the promised land. Period. If he was blind, he would have entered quietly. The word does not work automatically. Many believers in the body of Christ, this is what we have been taught. The moment, come doctor, the moment you find the word, believe it, confess it, go and sleep. Listen, I'm putting my hand on my head because it's worth lamenting. I am, I am a confessor of the word. Listen, listen, listen. This is a system. Go and buy rice, buy fish, buy oil, drop everything, heat your pot and go and sit down. Talk to me, ladies. That sounds to me like rice well prepared rice no sir while you are in the parlor keep rejoicing that your food is getting ready you are doing the right thing but after a very wrong approach are you seeing that now 
this is what many of us have done we just get a scripture in the name of Jesus Christ the Bible says I shall lend to nations I will borrow that's correct but incomplete correct but incomplete the precepts of the kingdom is line upon line you don't jump steps and choose the one you like and say God let it cover the rest no sir you are having the readiness to judge disobedience only when your obedience is complete that means your obedience can be incomplete it is obedience but it is not complete are we together yeah. planes have crashed because the pilot did everything right and missed one or two steps have you seen people have accident because they just slept the, the car was going well the fuel but they missed a step and that led to a ghastly motor accident that took the lives of many listen to me nobody will build a destiny just by saying because I have seen the Word of God and just jumped around it it won't work that way I want to show you tonight how to engage the world I started last week I want to show you the operation how does this thing work the Bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise let me tell you something you see I love everybody but I don't listen to everybody I love everybody I am open to learn but I have cultured my understanding because there are certain predictable results I want to get I don't want to waste my time at random being in confidence today and then being confused over what I believed yesterday I want to coordinate my understanding to make sure that I attain something very tangible I've always shared it is like taking lectures everywhere will you be awarded a degree at the end of it today you go to medicine next tomorrow you just hop to faculty of arts and then next tomorrow you just go to PG block and just stand by the door and attend anything you are writing after many years you have been engaging randomly it is your constructive uh, engaging of knowledge that coordinates your understanding up along the path of a field this is how it is many of us are not in ignorance of what we want but we lack the requisite knowledge and we have not taken advantage of the grace that has been supplied or we have not understood the operation that will lead to that outcome this brief teaching tonight is going to be a mighty deliverance for many people you will see what we have been doing and why it looks like regardless of our prayers nothing is working and it will be a deliverance because if God does not come now you will continue till 2021 and it will not work because brothers and sisters God is moved with your tears but he acts based on his word he is touched by your tears he's called compassion but only the word of God compels him to action the darkness the hovering round of the spirit did not bring light wonderful sympathetic to that environment but until the Word of God came nothing changed hallelujah engaging the Word of God <clears throat> scripture says that the entrance of thy word giveth light listen the entrance of thy word giveth light and then it gives understanding to the simple the entrance not the reading not the recitation not the quoting not the watching the entrance there is an activity of the word when it enters into your spirit truly the bible says it can give light and then dependent on your state it can graduate from light to understanding are we together now that's what the Bible says would happen to us and if we understand how the Word of God works then it will be from one glory of fearful results to another the laws of God listen to me the laws of God are a representation of his love and his justice 
you have to understand this don't let the laws of God irritate you they are put there to guarantee predictability to your victory thank you James chapter 1 we're reading from verse 22 to 25. James chapter 1. Apostle James is teaching us now. James chapter 1. But be ye doers of the word. Everyone say doers of the word. And not hearers only. Then he says if you are a hearer only, what are you doing to yourself? Deceiving yourselves. To 25. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, what is it called? The law that liberates men. The law of liberty that when you access it, it can set you free from any bondage and continue daring. He, not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, what will that man have? This man, whoever he is, shall be blessed in his deed. If something is happening to my results, I must go back is that not how mechanics fix a car when you kick a car it should start one kick and everything should move but when you kick a car and engage the gears and they are not working the mechanic steps back and says okay let's array a number of problems that might be wrong maybe the gear system maybe the ignition maybe the battery and he begins to check and then later he, ah I see where the problem is and then he fixes it if he gets it right the car responds immediately if he gets it wrong that car can be grounded forever the problem is not the car it was designed to work there are times you need to change mechanic you just say thank you sir you have been struggling around this car for a very long time i appreciate your effort and then you go to someone who can help you understand this while he's fixing it you're just watching him and hoping he's right the most important thing is the result is the mechanic you are waiting for sometimes he will tell you go and outsource certain things and bring we will add it to this car and then it will work that's how your destiny is that's how your prosperity is that's how the increase of the anointing in your life is there are people who have been anointed all that they have learned is how the anointing comes they have never learned how it grows so they are at one level forever they are anointed but you never see growth everything in their life is at the same level for a very long time is God speaking to us our family members every one of us we take the Bible and quote it and quote it and jump around and mock ourselves before situations and circumstances and hope we are right brothers and sisters let's sit down and examine this thing our, our results are showing that something is wrong I don't know about you but I'm a very honest person at least to myself when a thing is not working I don't lie that it's working I go back to the drawing board there's got to be a way I cry for the spirit of revelation there's got to be a way Lord there is a way out there is a way out open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things from out of thy law spirit of wisdom spirit of revelation you were you were authorized by God to guide me there is the truth somewhere and I begin to search like an archaeology boom the light comes when light comes then darkness goes and goes forever Pray in one minute, Lord, show me what I'm not doing right. Show me what I'm not doing right. I take responsibility. I would have been healed by now. There is something I'm not getting. I'm missing a step for sure. What is closing the doors of favor over my life? 
why does this sickness leave and come back why 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 do people help me today and hate me tomorrow why does the church rise today and go down tomorrow there is something i do not know why do i see the power of god move mightily in a meeting today and then tomorrow it's as if i was not the one who god used yesterday why do i preach powerfully today and then tomorrow i turn around and it's as if i'm barren of utterance what am i missing oh god show me these systems why did i enjoy strange favor in august and right now december is as though my heavens have closed what is what am i missing because the word of god lives and abides forever that means the result should be steady and predictable lord i'll not be ashamed when you reveal to me no no i humble myself i mean business with my destiny open my eyes to where i'm making the mistake open my eyes to the place where i'm missing it that's the place where satan has capitalized on my result let god be true and every man a liar let god be true and joshua selman a liar god cannot lie something about my not understanding his ways is responsible for where i am god cannot lie god cannot lie god does not lie there is something we do not understand that is authorizing darkness hallelujah look up in the bible the first demonstrators of the fact that a man can do motions but not as authorized and not receive results is cain and abel adam taught them the way to sacrifice is that true and for abel he was able to sacrifice according to pattern and the bible said that his sacrifice rose to heaven and for cain he just brought anything and thought it was just by the action and his sacrifice was rejected it was not about cain it was not about abel cain was a rebel you would see it in the later parts of his life he was not complying to the pattern that was given and Abel innocently innocently and his sacrifice was received it's not about the tithe you have been carrying an envelope and standing with it and dropping an envelope that you dropped an envelope of 10% of your money does not mean your heavens were opened the understanding that sponsored what you have done is what gives life to the activity the activity you do is empowered by the life that comes through understanding it is not motions people package seats and drop they drop money they do all kinds of things they dance they jump around they confess they fast and pray and do everything there is no understanding listen in my opinion the worst man on earth is a madman not a dead man a madman followed by a blind man these are the two most dangerous states any human on earth can be when you are a madman you're, there is no possibility for your understanding to be fruitful number two when you are blind you are limited in many ways are we together that's why when Jesus saw mad men read your Bible every madman Jesus saw he insisted until that person was healed why does the word of god seem to be important in our lives let me give you two reasons and then we may share a few things if god grants us grace why does the word of god seem important in our lives regardless of our supposed engaging it 
Number one. <laughs> Number one. We do not engage the word with understanding. The first reason why the word of God seems important is because we are engaging it based on our opinions or the opinion of a preacher proposed to us but not based on understanding. In all thy getting, get understanding. In all your sowing, sow with understanding. In all your praying, pray with understanding. In all your serving, serve with understanding. In all your dancing, dance with understanding. The Bible says whatever it is that you get, have an understanding of what you are doing. That's the first reason why the word of God seems important. The second reason is that the word of God is not engaged at all. The word of God may be believed. It may even be received, but it's not engaged. The word of God is not engaged at all. We leave the responsibility of engaging the word to God. And let me tell you where this mistake came from. It is in not knowing that the grace of God like wisdom and like love are multifaceted. Everybody say multifaceted. There are many attributes in the realm of the spirit that are multifaceted the bible talks about the height the depth of love like wisdom too the depth the height grace has dimensions are we together one dimension of grace is unmerited access particularly the grace that saves the grace that saves was so designed because there is nothing in ourselves and by our power we are able to do. So the system of receiving the grace that saves is to believe the report and confess the Lordship of Jesus. The moment you do that, the Bible says you are saved. For with the heart, this is how this operation works. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation this is soteria yes but this was in the context of salvation now listen carefully that's how that grace works now there is a dimension of grace that empowers you to do you do but the strength for doing is supplied by the spirit are we together now the bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, I believe, and verse 20, it says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Above that, who are those who are doing the asking and the thinking? You. I'm doing the thinking, I'm doing the asking, but I am doing it according to an ability that is working in me. In me. Jesus sent the 72. Go, you go and do the teaching. But there is a grace that follows you. These signs will follow you. You move and then it follows you. Now, the challenge is when we take the concept of the operation of saving grace and apply it to every area of our life and say, for my finance, all I do is to believe and speak and it settles it. No, sir, it doesn't settle it. Read your Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to do and observe, do and observe, do and observe all that is written. How many? All, all that is written. All. That if you do, not just hear, not just speak, do according to, to all that the Lord commands, not according to the way you want. 
then it lists a number of promises that the Lord will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2, it says, and all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. Then it begins to list them. There is a doing. Listen, when your doing is by human strength, that's what we call works. When your doing is by divine strength, it's called partnership. In any case, there is a doing. It is when your doing is based on the strength of the flesh. That's what is called works of the law. When your doing is based on the supply of the spirit and in obedience to God's command, it's called partnership. It's what great men of God will call covenant. The obedience that binds you and commits you to God. Please take out time to understand how this thing works once and for all. So here's how it works. Come. This is a promise by God. Emeka, I am going to make you exceedingly fruitful. I am going to make you such an anointed man. See from scripture. This is my destiny for you. This is God speaking. Now it is left for Emeka to understand what is going to be my approach. He can say, wow, what a great destiny. Lord, are you not powerful? Who am I? Weak human being like me. When we arrive, just let me know. And he goes back. That's exactly the kind of believer Satan wants. Because he comes and says, look, look. If God is mighty, why does he need to be assisted? You see how Satan plays with our minds? He said, God, he does not need your assistance. And he indoctrinates us into irresponsibility. And we step back and say, Lord, I just confess and leave everything. And God says, no, no. Right from the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. But the word had to come and become flesh and did things on earth in order for salvation to come to fruition. Why didn't he sit down and speak and say, after all, the father had declared. He came, died was resurrected by the spirit of holiness the bible declares and today is seated at the right hand of the father a physical coronation was done to him although he was the word the lord said to my lord sit down this is where we have missed it either we are not engaging according to knowledge the Bible talks about having a lot of zeal, but that their zeal is not according to knowledge. Or we are not engaging at all. Many of us are allowing God. Father, this is how we pray. Look up. Father, I pray, help my life. You see that kind of thing? It looks like a very honest prayer. Just because you are crying. Father, help my life. Look at my family. Lord, are you not looking at my father? What is, I'm reading that you are a merciful God. What is all this nonsense, oh God? Then you apologize and get back again. Okay, Lord, I'm, I'm serious. What I'm trying to say is, can, will you not step into my family? And God says, look, there is an ordinance. I bound myself by my own word. Are we together now? And then our parents just sit down and say, oh God have mercy on our finances lord there are demons disturbing us in this house which man of god will come and help us now eh you see that and we keep saying all these things and then we discuss and hope it will happen or a preacher says oh god increase my ministry i've been standing no members no workers people come and receive miracles and go i am a very sound man of god but there's no increase those groups of people will never receive any testimony i guarantee you if you are one of them i show you the way out this night because it will never change nothing changes until it is engaged if this gentleman is not a human being he stands here and remains here that's what sir isaac newton taught us in mechanics is that true for this gentleman to move i must apply a force that is greater than where he's standing and it moves him is that true this is how your destiny stands and remains. This is how your finances will stand and remain. This is how witches and wizards will keep oppressing you. 
that you got up in the night and just mumbled tongues for five minutes. Ah, in Jesus' name. I beg, just go. And then you just lazily put one coin on your message and go back to sleep. And then after that, you just get up and it doesn't bother you. You couldn't sleep in the night. But once it's morning, we forget the things that are behind. Those kinds of people will never rise. So how does the word, how does God himself prescribe that we operate the word? Let me show you. Number one. The first thing a believer has to do is not to search scripture. The first thing is to believe that God is alive and he's mighty all this searching of the bible is useless until there is a conviction in your heart he that cometh unto god hebrews 11 and verse 6 he must believe that he exists when you are still doubting whether there is a god no matter what you search in the bible is subjective you will doubt one day paul said i know whom i have believed it's not the believing. I know the person I believe. And I am persuaded in his ability. I am persuaded. Before you start searching scripture for your health, for your finance, for your life, do you believe in the reality of God? Now, this is where the ministry of the Holy Spirit comes. Because it is the Spirit of God that makes Jesus real to believers. Miracles do not make Jesus real. Listen to me. The disciples saw many people rise from the dead. Have you seen congregations that see all kinds of miracles? Yet one of the greatest levels of unbelief can be resident within those believers. Peter went on evangelism. He was part of those who returned. But when he stood, he doubted. The disciples ran away. So the first thing is an encounter, an encounter with God. The foundation for operating the word properly is a settled conviction about the fact that God is alive. And number two, that he is mighty and able. You have to settle that. Otherwise, your journey to exploring the word of God is a waste. Many religions teach all kinds of things about Jesus Christ and about God. And even in the Christian faith, there are all kinds of disturbing variations and understandings about God. There are people who believe that God is not really God. He's just one of the many deities. So they add him, it's an all-inclusive thought about God. That God, the name God is like a man with so many dimensions. And Jesus is just one dimension of him and there are other dimensions. If that's what you believe, the word will not profit you. You see that? Yes. Number two, when your conviction is settled, now listen carefully. Number two is that there must be a searching. The Bible says for everyone that seeketh, find it. There must be a searching. You don't sit passively and quote any scripture for anything. All keys don't open any door. There are specific keys for specific doors. Are we together now? Yes. You cannot have a financial concern and you are applying a scripture of marriage. Except if the Holy Ghost opened your eyes to see a mystery there. But you just stand, oh, and he was alone. And you just quote it and say, Lord, I, 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 at least it's the Bible. Bible is Bible. No, sir. No, sir. All this humanist point of view that keep punishing us, you have to find the accurate word. The key to your kitchen does not open your bedroom. The key to your bedroom does not open your car. The key to your car does not open the safe of a bank. They all require keys. But you must be able to piece together the scriptures that address the issues of concern. And where you do not know those scriptures, follow those who have conquered in that area. They have conquered by the word. You see how it is? So this lady is walking, for instance, in tremendous dimensions of the anointing. And I'm trusting God. Now I believe God wants to anoint me. 
I'm tired of my church struggling, sick people not being healed. And I search around. I'm in ignorance. And I just find out, okay, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. Lord, I receive, but nothing is working. It means I have to explore. It is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers to help you and open up that mystery. All you do is just read. The Holy Ghost shall come upon you. Lord, I believe. Now the Holy Ghost is upon me. And you get up. You are seeing that nothing is working. That's to tell you there is more than that thing you read. Every time the obvious does not produce result, go prophetic immediately. It means there is, there is a deeper understanding. Every time the obvious doesn't produce the result you desire, there must be a prophetic interpretation. So I access her materials and I sit with the Holy Spirit. And then I trust him to begin to open me up. Now listen, listen, listen. When you begin to study the Bible and meditate upon it, you need time and you need concentration. Two things that we lack in this, our distracted generation, time and concentration. You can't be cooking and trying to access revelation. You quickly, the food is hot on fire and you are wondering until it starts smelling as if you are burning and in the middle of something that is living heaven just about to get to you, you run. And then while you are trying to off the gas, you return back. You won't continue where you left. You will start afresh again. It's like worship. When you finish worshiping and they take light, you hope that they bring it fast. If they don't bring that light after 30 minutes, don't think they just bring it and you continue. No. Somebody who was kneeling before just gets up and starts punching his phone. Time and concentration. Let me tell you this. Many believers are distracted. It's a strategy of Satan. You are studying your Bible and playing computer game. Satan. Yes, sir. Satan. I didn't say Satan made the game. Satan created that system to distract you. Studying your Bible and making a long call. Then what did you say? I'm still on it. No, no, sir. No, sir. Study great men. How does God reveal these things to them? When there was a need for revelation, Daniel said, Oh, king, don't worry, just give us time. Daniel was not loitering around in the silence. Then the secret was revealed. Then the secret was revealed. There are some of us who believe that because you are always around people, it's a sign that you are a famous person. Let me advise you. You may not be very great if your entire life is corporate. You must understand the power of a private life. Are we together? It's good to have a corporate fellowship. It's good to be with your husband, your wife, your children. But there are times, listen, certain realities in the spirit cannot come until you are alone. Even demons work like that. There are certain levels of oppression that will never happen till you are alone. There are certain levels of encounters that never happen until you are alone. I want you to learn this. These things I'm teaching you are, are the ways God has opened me up to revelation. You need conviction, then you need to search out. Let me take one area that is very obvious for us. Let's talk about maybe the issue of wealth and prosperity. For instance, things are not working in your life. Things are not working in your family. Let me tell you what many of us say. Oh God, I've been crying about this employment issue. It won't you wipe my tears and give me a job. Be very honest. Is it a job that is going to solve your problem? I'm not saying a job is bad. But you need an understanding of the economic system of the kingdom. Not a job. You don't make money off job. You don't make money off business. You make money off understanding. Are we together now? Yes. And so the person just says, well, Lord, I thank you. And then you believe that things will change. Or your health. You are trusting God. The devil is afflicting your body. Afflicting your body. And you are happy here and there. You just quote some scriptures in Jesus' name. By his stripes, I am healed. And then that settles it. You won't get healed that way. I want you to study the Bible. 
I, I got a very powerful revelation from Bishop David Oetico that, I, I mean, it did something to my life in a way that I cannot begin to explain. Do you know that Satan is very particular about two things? Sickness and poverty. They are his master keys in keeping believers oppressed. Sickness and what? Poverty. He doesn't mind you being brilliant. That's all right. If he struggles to hold you and you refuse, he will let you be. But your body and your finances, he fought the body of Moses, he fought the well-being of Israel in Egypt. Listen to me. These are the two areas that when you want to break free, it's not just quoting scripture, there will be warfare. Are you, are you, are you hear what I'm saying? Warfare. That you want to walk in divine health, whereas your entire lineage has a track record of sickness. Look at all the people who were healed in the Bible. They were not casual. Thou son of David, have mercy, was passing. The woman with the issue of blood. Eh, Madam, please don't embarrass us. Say, you, are, you, are, you are joking. Shouted until Jesus responded. The blind guy at the pool of Siloam. What of the one that they tore a roof to bring him inside? Said we can negotiate with the owner of this house. The same money that fixes the roof, we spend 10 times it in the hospital. When it comes to your health, it's going to be more than recitation. Trust me, it will be warfare. Because this body is what authorizes you to function on earth. Satan will fight it with cancer. He will fight it with anything he can fight. Look at young people now having, um, what they call this thing? Blood pressure. Blood pressure. Last born and he has blood pressure. Everybody is taking care of him. Yet he still has high blood pressure. Are we together? Yes. That's to tell you blood pressure is not a product of fatigue. It's a demon. It's a demon. Don't let anybody tell you it's because of stress. Doctors, well done. I love all of you, but believe me. Just hear what I'm telling you. It will not be just because of stress. It's a spirit. A wicked spirit from hell. Hell had enlarged itself. Releasing all kinds of strange demons. I pray for people and I look at certain sicknesses. I know that this has to be a demon. Praise the Lord. They say you are sick. But you find out that is when you are praying. All kinds of objects. You can't see it all. But you are feeling it move from your leg. To your stomach. To your chest. Then it stops there. And very soon they say, ah, you have a breast, a, 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 a lump on your breast. That devil is a liar. That is a spirit. It's not just some kind of, I say, you ate too much starch. No, sir. No, sir. Before we knew anything about nutrition, people were dying in the Bible. Every time they died and food killed them, they said there was death in the pot. They didn't say there was sickness. It's the spirit of death. Do you know there are certain manifestations of poverty that appears as sickness you never get healed till your money finishes then by yourself you get healed you buy the highest level of panadol it won't go are we together you pray and fast it won't go the moment you backslide that headache just goes like that is that a sickness no sir is God speaking to us? And then finance. The demon of finance is even the worst one because I've seen that one myself. Let me tell you why it is bad. It is Satan's deception in the body to believe that trusting to access the blessings of God is antagonistic to your spirituality and will alter your passion for God. Sir, Poverty will keep you farer from God than a blessed life. Take it from me. When you stand and see an empty plate before you, you will be shocked to see that as holy as you are, you are thinking still it. Are we together? You know, we don't tell ourselves the truth in church. We lie to ourselves. Is that true? Is that not what is making parents to push children? You have to go and marry so-so-so. 
this guy is not born again no problem he has what can wipe our tears will you think like that if God has helped you please answer me no. what of those who still in the house of God do you think they were born thieves no the pressure that poverty brings how many churches have people stealing from offering as the account in the finance department they write a check a blank check they quickly put their names there and pocket it poverty the ladies that sleep with big men do they sleep with poor men please answer me how much does the poor man have is it not a big man somewhere that promises them that I will change your life and you are there and your ends have not met then you don't know where dinner will come from yet we keep laughing and think it's not an issue there are people now some of you students school is about to resume and the truth is they don't know where the school fees will come from so when you say let's pray the person starts praying and later you find out that you've kept quiet by yourself it's a spirit how many men of God stopped loving God and stopped being serious you can't sit down in a house where you have not paid the rent and you are fasting any knock on the door will distract you no matter what God is saying these are strategies of the enemy please I if all you think about poverty is just nice shoe nice car you are carnal this thing is warfare this is the destiny of the saints you are talking about bless you darling are we together how many graduates now as soon as they graduate they just say Lord I want to spend one year with you and they just say daddy I just decided to take one year for a retreat and your father will say come home as if he wants to give you money when you sit down he will say what did you say are you are you an idiot it was with my pension I was running your your school you are staying one year to see God that means I'm not a Christian you better go and look for work your uncle was talking the other day and the Lord is telling you consecrate one year to know me for the destiny I'm showing you but pressure is coming from anywhere and you dare not say no you find yourself in a profitless job and you are crying every day you say I want to leave society says you better don't leave hunger will kill you Hi. may God raise a generation of people that will access these things you know years ago I listened to our father in the Lord Bishop Oyedeko and as he said these things passionately people criticized him they still do and all those poor and broke people are the ones today that are making their congregations poor and angry I don't want to sit down serving God thinking about money imagine if I was thinking about my daily bread I now prophesy to you and say Sam see me after service God just shows me that a wealthy newcomer has come. I say, Madam, specially see me, you see me after service. There's something God said I should tell you. I can't say it in public. Hunger, whose God is their belly? It's a very serious issue. I know we are laughing. I'm very serious about it let me tell you prosperity has contributed to my concentration and the anointing upon my life yes sir yes sir I can sit down spend time worshiping bless your people oh God not come and say you are joining the queue where's the envelope you are holding you, you can imagine that kind of thing so it's not every man of God you see doing these things that are bad they have not understood how to engage this is what I'm trying to bail you from are we together do you know how to command results or are you aware that results can be commanded do you know how to command it or are you aware brothers and sisters if you find yourself in the valley of the shadow of death do you know how to come out or do you hope you will come out There are people playing gimmicks about the anointing with shock I watch the things that people do that they believe brings the anointing and they will not listen you see one of the things I've learned with Satan is that you see pride and fear 
are power twins that Satan brings to your life to disturb you. On one side you are afraid, but on another side there is tremendous arrogance. So they will not learn. When I find somebody who has an understanding in an area I don't, I will not argue. No matter what I don't understand about what he's saying, I give his revelation a chance. There are very broke people who will sit down and analyze every pastor, listen to a message and say, this is not correct. Look at the person talking. Are we together? There are many people who have never prophesied. They have never seen anything. And they will tell you, hear God alone. Don't listen to a man of God. The person who is talking to you is talking and he wants you to listen to him. Yet he's telling you that you should not listen to a man of God. Nobody needs to prophesy to your life. Forget about just to do this and, and for this cause. Many are weak. There are many people, just one prophetic word is what your destiny is waiting for. But they can stay for 10 years. They've done everything well, but one thing is needful and they've missed it. Are we together? Hmm. Don't criticize what you don't understand. Let your heart be open to say, Lord, speak to me. It is the doers of the word that commit God, not the hearers, not the readers, not the watchers, not the listeners, the practitioners of the word. This ministry by the grace of God Almighty is where it is by the grace of God, not because of the intelligence of a man. Joshua Selman is too small to produce this result. Rabbi, Nicodemus said, we know that thou art a man sent from God, for no man can do this. This result is not in the realm of men. No man can do this except God be with him. Let's review two areas for tonight. Is that alright? Let's review two areas of our lives. Two areas of our lives. Let me pick one, our spiritual lives and then our finances. Let's pick these two areas. How do we rise by the revelation of the word? Let's start with our spiritual life. Some of you think I'll start with money. Listen first. Your spiritual life. Hallelujah. Spiritual life. <laughs> if I ask you, how do we grow spiritually? What are you going to tell me? I read my Bible. And I pray every day. Question, have you not been doing it? Have you been growing? <laughs> are we together? There are many liars in church. We just open the Bible in the morning and read anywhere. We are just come. The purpose of reading the Bible for many believers is to cure themselves from the guilt of not feeling spiritual. They just open any scripture. And Abraham did this. Then they open another one. The Lord will perfect all that concerns you. Then they pray, Lord, I thank you. Today is blessed. I speak to this day. And then they come out and their lives are messed up. And after many years, they don't grow. Brothers and sisters, that's not how we grow in the kingdom. You never grow just by looking at a Bible and mumbling words. Take it from me. No, you don't grow that way. Not in the anointing, not in the knowledge of God. I want to show you how to grow because people can grow let me tell you the first key to growth write it down Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13 is called the law of encounter this is the first mystery that is responsible for growth in the kingdom Jeremiah chapter 29 please give it to us and verse 13 13 13 13 Jeremiah 29. Read it with me. One to read. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. The last three words, please. One to read. One more time. One more time. You see these three words? That is the separator of casual Christians and people who will find God. It says, and ye will seek me. Many are doing it, but you will only find me 
when you search for me with everything everything brothers and sisters your motive and your hunger for God vetoes your fasting it vetoes your prayer it vetoes your study of Bible and your reading of books there are many of those who wrote the Bible they work in Zondavan they work in white taker house the publishing companies but they are not born again printing the Bible and walking around it does not bring growth there is a depth of hunger read your Bible everyone who found God in the Bible searched for him with everything not a casual pastoral search not a woman of God mama search uh -uh. not a businessman theoretical search not an academician search ye shall seek me hear what David said a man who was full of encounters as the deer pants after the water brooks reading the Bible does not mean you pant after God it may just mean you are not yet employed so you are whiling away time until your letter arrives and you get busy brothers and sisters there is one thing I know if you must remain in the faith you need an encounter with God an encounter that is higher than business an encounter that is higher than money that is the only thing that has capacity to keep you if you don't have an encounter I promise you the busyness of ministry will make you go still are we together encounters there are pastors who are good readers of the Bible excellent revelators of the word but there's no encounter and you find out they rise the moment ministry starts moving you see an, an unbelievable deviation of convictions you didn't an encounter an encounter is the place of intimacy with God that is the place of pruning that is the place of dealing that is a place where your all is before him an encounter is not a place where men of God meet God an encounter is where those who are desperate for him they say oh God as a matter of life and death that is the place where he washes you that is the place where he builds you you don't have an encounter you will never grow spiritually we can flatter ourselves listen the appearance of the gifts of the spirit in your life is not necessarily proof of growth there is a big deception sweeping the body of Christ and thank God I walk in this thing so that you don't think that maybe I'm just talking listen I can walk whether in the healing or the prophetic grace the anointing on that office is not a reflection of my spiritual growth it is the grace and empowerment that comes by reason of being called into that office if that anointing comes on a handkerchief it will produce the same result handkerchiefs don't have spiritual lives listen that's why you can lay hands on someone during a service and he can pray for sick people and they'll be healed after 10 days find out whether he will still do it again it's gone because you have to dig your well and cultivate a healthy spiritual life impartation does not cover for encounters you can receive an impartation of grace and the moment you enter a meeting you see people jumping up and down or you and an, an impartation of the spirit of revelation and you begin to teach the Bible do you know there are people who finish teaching the Bible and afterwards when they enter the office they now start discussing and you're like this is is this thing is it that these people don't believe what they say I've seen music artists that when you see them service is going on they are at the back of the church just taking sugar cane eating biscuit they now say it's time for Elijah to come and minister and then just cleans his mouth and comes and after five minutes you see people rolling on the floor and you finish you say my God Elijah no sir no sir God does not judge you based on the gift in your office it's based on how much you pursued him seekers of his presence you can study the Bible out of competition 
to make sure that you are the first to bring certain dimensions you can study the bible out of just to make sure you have sermons i know pastors and that's wonderful i teach it too there are pastors that have a sermon for every topic all they keep doing when they are invited is to just flip what are we talking about now uh the axe head will flow together. Ah, I remember 2004, I preached a message like that. Just dust it, add A and B. Are we blessed? The starting point of your spiritual life is to trust God for a hunger that can last your lifetime. Mm. I will give up ministry a thousand times. Some of you don't like what I'm saying because I said I'll talk about money too. You better listen to what I'm telling you because this is this is what will make money not kill you. I want you to ask the Lord, he will tell you there is nothing in this life, nothing in this life that I cannot give God. Ask him there is nothing that is the measure of your love for God the measure of your love for God is not sunk when you say you love this lady she says sir I've not eaten I say sorry they just called me at the police station you are a liar and a foolish gentleman because if it is true love it will cost you are we together the cost dimension I'm showing you how these things work spiritually what you see God do in my life today I submit to you is not just entirely a product of my prayer and fasting It's because God knows that anything he gives me is his own ah, my own my anointing my ministry when did that happen I'm showing you where we are missing it although we are still studying the Bible. How many pastors move around? Oh, my member, my choir, my this. And God says, all right, so you pay the bills. You, you, you decorate everything. You bring members by yourself. How many churches put pressure on their people? Go and bring five souls. Otherwise, you pastor will look at you and say, I saw three. Please. 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 John Wesley said, set yourself on fire and the world will come and watch you born. Where the carcasses are, brothers and sisters, that's where the eagle will come. There are people who have traveled from several cities and several places today because there is a fire. The key is not to go and call them. The key is to keep burning. The key is not to go and call them. The key is to keep burning. My heart belongs to you. My life belongs to you. When I go to pray, he is Lord of my prayer. I don't just go -da 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 -da, as if I'm a fool. As if you are, you are, you are chanting a, a charm. I approach God like one who is totally dependent on him. He is the Lord of my prayer life. Many of us think that the power is in the dissipation of energy. So when we do it and someone is watching you, you are hoping they are bearing it on record that you are a prayer warrior. No, sir. This is not how spiritual things work. Above the mercy seat, below the cherubims, there I will meet with you. There is a meeting place. And I, I, I'm desperate for you. How it works in the kingdom and uh, hey, I'm desperate for you. listen man of God let me tell you why the anointing has been far from you because every time you think power you think conference 
you think of a plane flying you around every time you think God you think honorarium every time you think God you think man of God you imagine yourself entering a meeting and everybody saying this is a person and God says you know way you first try hundred days and God says in spite of it and you shall seek me and only find me and any other dimension in me when you seek me with your heart you see the way pastors hold ministry they, are, they, they hold ministry as if if anybody ever preaches oh, one is not them please let them not take my church and they struggle and kill themselves koinonia belongs to him it's a privilege to lead this ministry you see that gone are the days when they preach encounters now everybody just preaches open the bible read and somebody just quotes a scripture oh uh, yeah the deep things of god and we bounce around like a debate and while we are doing it heaven is watching that's why there is no life in what we do listen let's return to the place of encounters ask anyone those of us who started in this ministry it was people and god alone at the back of a fence at the this is encounter encounter is not sitting down and no it is encounter that makes you to listen to a 30 minutes tape and finish it in three days because you will be offing it every moment there were people who will lock gone at the days when people lock themselves from morning till night now when people lock themselves to pray it is oh god give me a wife oh god give me a husband i'm not saying these things are wrong oh god give me this oh god i must graduate oh god i must get a job service what is all this nonsense and ye shall seek me please god is not a joker let me tell you if all of you does not seek him forget about it there are ladies seeking god only to prepare themselves for ministry no you won't find god that way if at any point you find yourself using God, just know that you and the anointing, you and glory, you are far. Please hear what I'm telling you. I, I never started, hold on, I never started my walk with God knowing I will even be a preacher. One, one gentleman came here, I think some months ago, with documents from his ministry, well articulated, and he said he has been listening he wants to start a walk and he just came to take my blessings i said wonderful i believe god calls people but what have you done have you taken a i looked at him and at once there is a there is the smell of the secret place it's an aura when you see people who are not those who have visited it is their habitation there is the aura it's not in the huskiness of your voice it's not it's not in the it's not in the preacher friendly tone no sir take all of me all of me lord you have my everything use all of me all of me lord take all of me I release my everything take my everything say take all of me all of me Lord Listen, I wrote this song in a secret place I'm not a musician this this is what happens when you want to grow Paul and Silas did not have Bible study conferences but brothers and sisters these men were seekers of God there was a prophetess called Anna the Bible says she stayed in the temple stayed in the temple since she was 24 for 60 years in the temple
listen preachers we are the ones to blame first leave members alone we don't have any encounter ourselves we just come up and dress well that you are preaching right does not mean he's releasing life the life is from your secret place not the greek not the hebrew hear me the life is from your secret place he said the word is like a double-edged sword that sword that enters the spirits of men you can't fake it listen honestly speaking we are at a risk of a generation that does not know how to seek God we know how to preach we know how to sing we know how to produce albums we know how to write books but to seek his face where you are fasting not because you want power you are saying Lord show me more of you reveal yourself to me I remember those days in the night those of you in vet vet a uh, faculty of um, what they call it now vet there is a place one of the neglected places I would climb that place and go on top of the zinc in the night I will be there till morning crying and saying, Lord I've created a place where no one can distract us reveal yourself I wasn't looking for power reveal yourself right now what happens in the church is just an is just a galore of talent galore of talent I am this I read this I know this I dress like this no sir that's why we have lost the power of God in the body of Christ as we sing this song this night brothers and sisters rededicate your life rededication is not for sinners rededication is for those who mean business with God Lord I rehand my life again take all of me all of me Lord hey, use all of me all Bible talked about a particular woman because that woman was involved in all kinds of bad past the Bible says she came before God with her treasure a representation of her all let me show you how to get the heart of God other people were coming with all their we know that Moses said this and he said this is not what I'm looking for but here comes a woman the Bible says she came with sparking out pure nard, one year's wages a representation of her heart and she knelt down before God the king poured it the Bible says she broke it you can pour small and return small you can give God your heart and take finance you can give God finance and take relationship listen you are not the first to go to school please hear what I'm saying especially for we the young people don't let anyone fool you that walking with God does not pay no you want to do business with God there is the price is death not morning devotion the price for encounter is death not eight hours prayers that's too small giving God eight hours of your time will not give him all of you you need to give him everything everything not eight hours you want to see the glory of God in your life and your meetings you can fast dry for 90 days you will not see anything you want to see demons crying out as you minister brothers and sisters is not running around to look for a man of God you a man cannot impart his secret place no sir impartation is only useful when you have set a foundation 
one of the most deceptive things happening in the body of Christ now is this craze for impartation. People just write the names of five or ten men of God around that they think are anointed and divide seeds like a business and hop from one location to the other, touch me, and then they snap. I, I, I got impartation from this. Hey, Jimmy, please. I got impartation for wealth. Apostle, I got impartation for this. Prophet, this, give me your own. Then they gather it in their room and lie to themselves that they are walking in those anointings. You are joking. You think God is that cheap? He said, many are called though, but few are chosen. Gone are the days when you will stay as a neighbor with someone, like roommate, and you hear people groaning and crying before God in the night. Now people snort their way till morning. A pastor, a preacher. Oh God, anything that will take your presence from my life, may it not come, may it not come, may it not come, may it not come, may it not come. It not come. Ministry, I will give it up a thousand times. Money, marriage, children, a thousand, a million times. Listen, those of you here who God has called into ministry or you are going into ministry, please, let me give you a loving caution. Be careful. Be careful. Who you follow matters. Be careful. There is a path. There is a path that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You show you are a shepherd by demonstrating your hunger for God. People follow your hunger, not your talk. While you are talking, people are watching you and they will find out, is it true that this person hungers after God? Brothers and sisters, I have met preachers in my life who preach what I call a boring message. But the presence of God that left them left me going back to cry and say, from whence cometh this man? Which depth? Where did this, what did this person touch? That's what happened to me when I went to Reinhard Bonke Crusade. I didn't go there to hear revelation. I was already preaching. I was already walking in miracles. I went to hear a man who knew God. He talked about the Holy Spirit and he proved it. Let's return back to the secret place. Let's return back to retreats. It's a language we are not used to again. Learn to off your phone, no. Please, learn to source, especially now that it's December. Don't enter. Do you know why we end Koinonia? We have just one more service and we are done. That one month break is not a time for people to go back to what they were doing before. Just go back and say, ah, let me go and see old secondary school friends and loiter around and call it Christmas holiday. It's a time for some of the workers in the ministry who labor day and night to now go and lock themselves. I can't wait to finish the last service where I know that I have time. No more counseling. No more ministrations. And let me lock myself and cry and roll before the God of my salvation. Not looking for power for next year. Not looking for prophetic word for next year. I don't get the prophetic word by searching. I get the prophetic word by worshipping God. And the visions he begins to open to me to the year. And he tells me. There are people who have come here now. And as they are listening to me, they are waiting to hear something, a revelation. Oh, Greek, Logos. And then they write and carry it quickly and go to their fellowship. Gentlemen, I shipped something from somewhere. We will keep mocking ourselves with this thing. You don't fake presence. When you carry the presence of God, it is palpable. 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 Something happened, I don't know when, when, which of the days now it was. I was alone and someone came to see me. And I wasn't even out here. The person just sat down, I went in. And all of a sudden, I came and saw the person shaking like a leaf. Shaking like a leaf. And I looked, I said, my God. Do you know why? Because you can make your house a habitation of angels. 
all kinds of things happen there all kinds you don't just become spiritual when you fast the key the key please hear me the key to knowing God is death not prayer not Bible study death a sacrifice of your all until you die the Word of God now becomes alive in you until you die the prayer now releases power to you if you have not gone through that process of death the way to the throne is the cross you can bypass the cross and just put a crown on your head and say I've gotten to the throne I wish I can go through this death for you it is one thing I know that you cannot pass through as a group listen to my message knowing God experientially there are some of us the orchestrations in our lives now are not caused by demons they are the constraints that God must subject you through to cause you to know him yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death until I walked there I never knew that I can fear no evil we live in a generation that binds everything we don't have discernment to know whether it is of God, whether it is a furnace that God is purifying us because we are bankrupt spiritually. A pastor just sits down and cannot discern what is happening to him. Anything you see that is not favorable to your senses, you cast it. And many of us have casted the realms from which power will come. There are people who God will say, all of you go for work. Gone are the days where people hear God like this. And somebody says, you owe for you. Two years you are with me. No work for you. And everybody is lashing on you and criticizing you. And saying this, your stupid man of God has turned your head upside down. And you feel that pain. And it is in that pain you know something about God. It will look as though Elijah just came to help himself. But a woman is about to receive breakthrough. A woman is about to receive. Only God knows what happened. A widow meant that she lost her husband. And several other things would have left her life. And then, that I may drink, verse 11. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Hear what the prophet says. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said. Make that sacrifice. I know that it is not convenient for you, but I'm standing here representing God to step into your life and command restoration, breakthrough. But I'm demanding something from you. In this case, that which is valuable to you now. Make me cake first. Bring it unto me and afterwards you will make for you and your son. Listen. I wish, I wish that what I were saying would just happen without sacrifice. Restoration will cost you. You will have to provoke your faith. A seed is not just money. A seed is a sacrifice of something that costs you. It's a proof that you love God. Whenever what you have is about to finish, there is a system to refill it again. In this case, he demanded sacrifice of her. Listen, a sacrifice in the realm of the spirit automatically brings whoever is doing it into a covenant with God. Psalm 50 verse 5, it says, Gather unto me my saints, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. This is why many believers never experience restoration. Why will you as a man of God come and meet a woman? Please, brothers and sisters, I want you to reason this. You look at someone who is about to dry, nothing is happening in her life, and then you are asking her to sacrifice something. Jesus was having a crusade. He was the organizer and the conveyor of the crusade. And then he said, go and feed the people, and there was nothing. And then... Andrew found a young lad. You would call it bullying. Our 
generation knows how to abuse words. You will even call it an abuse. Collected the boy's loaf and bread, his lunchbox, and took it to Jesus. And said, this is what we've been able to find. And Jesus said, fine. I thought Jesus was Abba, so, such a harsh and wicked adult. You mean you bully this? Go and return it back. I am love. But Jesus said, that's it. Have you always wondered who had the remaining 12 baskets? The boy was willing to sacrifice a moment of satisfaction to create something. Many believers do not know how to sacrifice now to smile. This is a principle that does not just go to seeds alone. Sacrificing the convenience, luxury today, so that you can carry an anointing and a grace that will be able to speak tomorrow. Sacrificing today to discipline yourself and learn the principles that will make you successful. You want to experience restoration and indeed it's a principle that applies to many mysteries in the spirit. Sacrifice. A few minutes ago you were shouting and now Koinonia is quiet. Why? Because it's a reflection of your unwillingness to part with things today and gain them tomorrow. If you want to be great, listen to me. If you want to defy the limitation that comes with this system, get used to this language, sacrifice. You will always give up something to go up. You won't hold what you have and still rise. The lighter you are, the higher you fly. Are we together? Sacrifice. Praise can be a sacrifice. Your seed can be a sacrifice. Your service in the house of God can be a sacrifice. Your honor to the vessels of God can be a sacrifice. You want to experience restoration. Listen, let me teach you something powerful about restoration. The blessing is not in what you have lost. The blessing is in what you have left. There's a very strange story in the Bible. I think it's in the book of Hosea or Amos. That a shepherd was trying to rescue a lamb that had been eaten by a lion. The lion so ate the lamb that there was nothing left. Only one ear and two legs. That was all that was left. Yet the shepherd still ran to still rescue the lamb. What will you do with one ear and two legs? Eating the intestines, eating all of this. But in the realm of the spirit, it is not what left you that is the issue. It is what you have left. What you have left is a sign that God is still interested in restoration. That's why everything did not go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Most times we forget what we have left and we keep regretting. Oh God, this one left me. A relationship left you but your health is still with you. That health can be the seed that will bring back another relationship. Your job left you, but your praise did not leave you. That praise can be a sacrifice that will bring another job. Are you getting the, the way this thing works? There is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. There is always something you have in your life that can bring back something you lost. Listen, let me repeat myself. There is always something in your life that you have today that can bring back something you lost. Miscarriage, and you are crying and say, Lord, this is the fourth miscarriage. You lost the baby, sad, but by the grace of God, you are still alive and you can speak. Use your help as a seed to get another child. The health that you have dedicated to praising God as a seed of sacrifice. Apostle, but I lost my father, he's gone. I lost my mother, she's gone. I lost my brother, he's gone. I understand and I sympathize with you deeply from the depth of my heart. But you are the seed that is left. Use yourself and your life to gain back what your father would have been and what your mother would have been. Everything they would 
would have been to you. Sowing that seed of sacrifice, someone can appear in your life and say, I may not be your biological father, but I take responsibility for your life from today. No strings attached. There is such a possibility. Are we together? Yes. They killed several children. The nation of Israel was under threat. And a woman carried her son as a seed and put him in a river and just said, Lord, just protect this guy. And God said, that son that you gave as a seed, I will use him as the deliverer to preserve them. Whenever you are afraid of losing things, you open the door for losses. That which I have feared most has come upon me. There are many of us, you are so afraid of losing things that you, you fear success when it comes because you think it will not last. Anytime good things happen, you are careful. A brother comes to propose to you and you are saying, well, I said yes, but the truth is I've not said yes first. I've had 10 people break my heart. That's what happened to the woman who met Jesus. Six husbands, five men shattered her heart. The sixth one is not even her husband and Jesus came. So she was careful. And Jesus said, me, I'm not like the rest though. And gave her an encounter. She became an evangelist instantly. Went and gathered people and said, come. What of the madman at Gadara? Do you know there was a time that man had his sense back? There was a time he was born. There was a day they dedicated him. There was a day the madness started gradually until he got to that acute state where even chains could no longer hold him. He was in a cave all by himself. So when they crossed over to the other side, demons came through him, but Jesus had compassion. He was seeing a man who had potentials to be an evangelist, to win 10 cities, yet he was under that situation. And Jesus said, we can do something. Now, when you read your Bible, I don't want us to turn there, but even with those demons, the Bible says the man worshiped Jesus. The remaining 1% sense that I have, the demons are making me look like I don't recognize you, but that ounce of sanity, I sow it as a seed and I worship you. And Jesus said, all right, all of you people trying to mess up this guy's life, you can go places, but let this guy be restored. The Bible says they came and they found him in his perfect mind. He went to the Decapolis, 10 cities, gathered people, and brought them to Jesus. The miracle is not in what you have left. I know that whilst you're sitting right now, there is a fibroid in your stomach. But can you use your mouth as the seed to take away that fibroid? Your stomach was affected, but you still have a voice. You can sing. You still have an ear. Your ear can be the seed, the sacrifice of attentiveness to listen to the word of the Lord can restore you. No man is ever helpless if you understand the mystery of seeds and sacrifices. Every time things leave you, forget about them. Focus on what you have left. Lord, I give up all your things. I lost my job. Lost my wife. Lost my children. I'm all alone. And God says, that's all you need. You are alone with me like Jacob. Use your aloneness as a seed. Sow it and receive an encounter. An encounter that will bring them again. Job understood this. He lost everything in his life. The only thing he had was his conviction. And the wife said, lose that one too. So, why are you talking like one of these foolish women? How else will he come back? Job said, though he slay me, I have lost my health, but I have not lost my voice. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Elihu and all and co were talking all kinds of nonsense. Job kept listening to them. And in chapter 42, Job said, well, I may not be able to give as I used to be, but I still have my mouth. I can be an intercessor. 42 verse 10, he started interceding for his friends. And God said, this is it. He turned his life around. And God turned the captivity of Job, 42 verse 10, when he prayed for his friends. Listen, there is always something in your life that can bring back something that left you. If this is the only revelation you have tonight, you will rejoice. Go back home and stop tear all of those sheets of papers that are archives of 
of regrets and start writing what you have left. I still have my convictions. I lost a job, but I still have my certificate. Are we together now? I lost my car, but my hands are still working well. I didn't die in the accident. And when you put all those things, you say, Lord, I laid this at the altar of sacrifice. I tell you to bring back everything and everything. Sacrifice. Number four, very quickly. The fourth key to restoration is engaging the prophetic. The fourth key to restoration, engaging the prophetic, specifically prophetic utterances. Let me show you three scriptures that will bless you tonight. Isaiah 42 verse 22. Please give it to us, media. Isaiah 42 verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. All of them are snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and non deliverance, for a spoil, and there is no advocate that prophesies to them, restore. For you to ever experience restoration, there must be the introduction of the prophetic into your life. The prophetic, the prophetic, either as an operation of the word of God or as a ministry of those anointed to walk in that respect. You have to understand what I'm teaching you. Without an encounter with a prophetic grace, a prophetic office, or a, a prophetic dimension of the word of God, there is no restoration. It's impossible. Second scripture, Psalm 119 verse 49. I found this scripture while I was studying and I felt it was very powerful and um, it would be great for us to see it. Psalm 119 verse 49. It says, Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Give us an amplified. I want to explain to you what this scripture said. Remember fervently the word and promise to your servant in which you caused me to hope. In other words, the man of God came and told you he has a covenant with God and said God made a promise to him that when he stands and does certain things, he will hear him. And you are now saying, Lord, remember, when that man of God spoke to me, that something about his altar and his covenant can bring me breakthrough, I believed it. And he said, remember the word, the promise you gave your servant, upon which I now hope that it will work for me. That's why sometimes you hear people say the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the God of Oyediko. So there is, it's not some religious, you know, whatever it is. It is a system of invoking the personal covenant. God, aside from the Old and the New Testament, God has personal covenants with men till today. God can enter a covenant with a man, a family, because of something that was done and say, look, whoever does certain things connected to this, I will bless you. God had a covenant with Abraham. Listen, and anybody and anything that came out of Abraham, a sad story later happened, and then Ishmael came out. When Ishmael came out, the Bible says Hagar, Hagar and Ishmael were in the wilderness. Two of them were crying. Only the voice of Ishmael was heard in heaven. Why? The Bible says God had the voice of the young lad. A child is crying. The mother is crying. Only one voice is heard in heaven. Because God said, Abraham, you and anybody and anything that comes out of you. It's not God's concern whether it was a mystic or not. He is bound to it. It is still the reason why Ishmael today can still manifest certain dimensions of the blessing. Remember. The last scripture. 2 Kings. Let's look at chapter 7. Actually, the whole is, is Elisha's encounter in Samaria, chapter 6, 7. But we're looking at chapter 7. Just two scriptures. 2 Kings, chapter 7. We'll read verse 1 and then we'll read verse 18. And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. This is the prophetic now. Samaria as a nation 
was ravaged by so much famine that the Bible says women were eating their children. Mothers, please think for a minute. Think of roasting the leg of your child and watching it roast and yet not being afraid. I've heard of people drinking their urine because of test, but I've not heard of people eating their children. So Nigeria's recession is not as bad as it was here. The Bible says women, as compassionate as they were, were eating the same children. Eating your child is like eating yourself. The child came out of you. It's the same thing as cutting yourself and eating it. And this is what happened. And the prophet came and said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Listen. He said tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Look at me. Let me teach you something profound. The miracle. This tomorrow was not something God revealed to the prophet and said, that's what I want to do. The, uh, the prophet chose the date when that land will be delivered. Listen. This is not revelation. It didn't say God revealed to me. In other words, I'm just giving you a superior information. There is a difference between revelation and creation. Revelation just gives you a prior knowledge of what is there anyway. Creation makes it appear and manifest. Like the testimony of our dear lady who goes to her room and sees piles of money, physical cash. Now that's creation. Revelation is I can stand here and say there is a brown envelope in your room. Go and check it. I didn't put it there. I only helped to guide you so you go and find it. This prophet was not creating. This prophet, I mean, he was not revealing. He was creating. He says, look, I understand that part of the privileges of prophetic ministry is to appoint to people dates. The realm of the spirit has events without dates tied to them. It takes the prophetic to appoint dates. That's why through the prophetic ministry, you can go into five years ago, pick an event that would have been your testimony that was corrupted through witchcraft and fast forward it and appoint a date in your future to make it happen. You have to believe this. Otherwise, how does God restore years? Are we together now? Time is only subject to this realm. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of happenings that are manipulated by the will of God and the intelligence of citizens on the earth who know how to make it happen. So there are events that represent the will of God. There are certain dimensions of his will that are fixed according to his predetermined counsel. But there are others that are flexible, left to the intelligence of the saints. Such as your miracle today. It's not God that decided that today will be your miracle. You would have chosen to remain at home. Jesus was passing a city called Nain. Are we Bible students? It was never his plan to raise any dead body. He was minding his business. He was not on evangelism. And he saw people crying. And then he said, what's going on here? And they said, there is a woman ravaged by witchcraft. Her husband that dead, her only son dead. And Jesus said, wait a minute, bring down that coffee. There and then, he decided the destiny of that woman. Brothers and sisters, hear me. This issue of one day, one day is faithlessness. You can insist. The Bible said today, if you hear his voice, you can choose and say, Lord, today, today, I'm tired of this hangover of nonsense around my life. Today is the day your faith can turn it around and bring you a miracle. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Listen, you are the only one who continues to progress in time. The realm of the spirit does not progress in time. The time is bare. Are we together now? So in the realm of the spirit, you don't, there's no such thing as past and present with God. So when you say, God, remember five years ago, you said you would do something and you did not do it. God said it doesn't make any difference. It can still happen. And you say, Lord, but I'm older now. God says, and so I can readjust it to still fit the older you. Lord, you gave me a word that I will marry at 21, I'm 35. And God says, no problem, I can't do it. Lord, I plan 
able to have six children. God said, it doesn't make any difference. Six years, two, two years with twins. My word has come to pass. Lord, you said you would prosper me, but this has not happened. I would have gotten a job. How much was the salary that time? 20,000. How much would you have had now? 1.2. God says, I give you an idea that brings you 2.4 in one month. You have to believe what I'm telling you. Otherwise, we're wasting our time here. The prophetic is powerful. It can appoint dates for spiritual events and cause them to be made manifest. You've seen this happen in Koinonia. Somebody will write jam, for instance, and have 160 something. And all of a sudden, a word will come and you go and check it again and see 260 something. How do you explain that? Someone writes an exam and just remembers writing his name alone on question one. And then comes and the word comes and the result comes out and is in 4.8. Oh, please, brothers and sisters, we are intelligent people, but we are also spiritual. Never allow your intelligence take away the place of the realm of the spirit in your life. The same way you are seated here and say, Apostle, can God do it? Brothers and sisters, he can. Look at my life. Look at this ministry. The word of God. Can God cure that sickness? Yes, he can. I repeat, yes, he can. Can God turn around my captivity? Some of you are not sick. But what is wrong with you is better sickness than that problem. God can still turn it around. God can turn it around. In the name of Jesus, God can turn it around. The Lord declared and said, I shall announce to us that this miracle service is dedicated towards restoration. I truly believe every word of God. And I believe that one of the things God is going to be doing tonight is to call back things. Compress time for people. Call back things. Please believe it. Believe it. Believe it. I am a testimony. I've seen God bless people overnight. Overnight. Ha! He said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Sometimes life can whip you to a point where you look up and say, God, I have served you. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't rob anybody. Why is my life like this? Then God tells you, locate the power of prophecy. Locate the power of prophecy. Some of you didn't want to come tonight. You can come and still look and say, wow, what an interesting service. Or you can come and say, Lord, it is within your power to change this situation. Why should we pro prolong it? It's within your power. It's within your power. You've seen the testimonies. We never announce anything here that is not verified. You've seen all the great testimonies. No matter what is wrong with your life, your ministry has crashed down. You were once on fire and once anointed, and something happened. You can't tell what it is, but that grace and that unction doesn't look like it's there again. You are preaching, and even you, you know you are not blessing anybody. Again, like the hair of Samson, it can come back again. My help. There's no one to take care of me. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There are many fathers and mothers. Prophecy just needs to bring two of you together. Tonight, if you believe what I'm teaching you, you will be amazed to see the way the Lord will turn your life around. Turn your life around. Apostle, I was pregnant. Now I'm seated here and baby cannot even move his dead. Just give me a few minutes and watch a miracle that will bring tears from your eyes. I believe God. 
I am one man of God that believes God can turn around any situation. It will always be like the Lord will perfect that concerning me soon or later he'll turn in my As if jobs are finished. A job is not with any government. A job is in the word of God. Listen to me. Don't cry. No. Stop that tears. It's a weak knot. When the book is open, tears will stop. God didn't gather you here. Some of you traveled so far. There are some of you standing in the, in the rain, standing outside. God is too faithful to come and waste your time. In the next few minutes, I want you to believe this. Please listen, listen. Don't be part of those. Now is not the time to pinch around and hope. Will God do it? Apostle, I lost money. Apostle, I lost joy. Apostle, I lost a job. They blackmailed me. able to restore. And let me tell you something. God can restore fast. He can restore fast. 430 years in captivity. One night God said that's all. When God arises, El Gibor, the mighty man, when he shakes himself and stands up and says, I want to leave David down, let me tell you, I don't care what which way. I have seen God lift people who were not even prepared. I ju he just chose that I want to make a specimen with this person. It doesn't take time. It doesn't take time. We're about to pray. I came here with all my heart, believing that God will restore somebody. If you belong to any of these categories, except you've not lost anything, you can sit down. But if you know there is something in your life that you know must come back, I'm not saying may come back, it's not a discussion. lost my joy, can't come back. I've lost my peace, can't come back. I lost my husband. God can fetch him wherever he is and return him. Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to pray for a few minutes. It will be very fast. I don't plan to waste our time here. We're going to be very fast. The message is already complicated. It's not when I start ministry. As soon as we start praying, I like you, please. If you have never believed a man of God in your life, why don't you do this? Just, just be childlike for once and say, Lord, I believe the word of your servant. I open up my heart. I want you to open your mouth and call things back into your life. Call opportunities. This atmosphere is anointed. Call them.
going to pray, the Lord is asking me to go around anti-clockwise. This is the instruction God is giving me. To walk around like against, like a man is going against the clock. And this is someone's destiny, literally. Literally, someone's destiny. God is restoring something. It's an instruction that God is giving. Thank you. 
I'm seeing at least 11 people. It's like a stigma, a garment upon your destiny. Wherever you are right now, reproach, roll away. Roll away. Reproach, be rolled away by the power of the Holy Ghost.
one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. The Bible says there is no man who stands on a pillar and looks back to his feet. Remember Lot's wife. She was connected to the past. Her exodus had begun to come. And they were asked to look, set their face like a flint, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. And while she was there, something about her past. And just for turning back, she became salt. The past can keep you in one place forever. Just because she turned back, she became salt. What is there in turning back? Everything. It can stagnate your life forever. I prophesy one more time. Whatever has made you to be that has made you to distrust any man that comes into your life because when they come you think they are like the ones who came before a past job, a past breakthrough a past wife a whatever it is has stopped many people from moving forward every time you see success it looks like the way you rejoiced yesterday before failure came so you are even afraid of it no for your business, then it crashed. Now God sends a helper. He's giving you 500,000. Instead of receiving it, he's reminding you of yesterday's failure and you are afraid. You are afraid of embracing your future because you think it will look like your past. In the name of Jesus Christ, I once again separate you from your past. asking me to pray for people who nothing is working in their lives. Listen, this is a very serious prayer. I want you to believe this. There are people here as they are standing. Believe me when I say nothing is working. There are some, some aspects are working. We are still coming here. But the Lord is asking me to address issues. Some of you as you are standing here, inside and outside, online, if you will be honest with yourself, nothing is working. From marriage to finance to job to academics to life to health, everything is down. I want to pray for you. Everyone lift your hands. The truth is, you, you won't know it's the prayer that will tell you. Because you may think things are working. I want to pray for you.
section inside and outside. Prophecy is powerful when it's done with understanding. It can wipe your tears in one minute. Lift your hands. You are laid up. I'm going to pray for you. Oh, is it Augustus? Yes, Augustus or August. Something that has been Augustus. Augustus or something like that. Augustus. I'm hearing like Augustus, please. We have to finish fast because we have to pray for the city. Augustus, change the story. Oh, Jesus, something just left you. You are sick. That sickness has gone now. In the name of Jesus. Look at me, my brother. You don't make it in life by hustling. You make it in life by divine direction. This is what God is saying. What's your name? Just bring them, but the name I hear is Augustus, but I will pray for you, something Augustus. My brother, hold my hands. This is not about hustling. Huh? It's not moving around. It's walking circumspectly by the Spirit and in gratitude. grace. Hold my hands. The Lord will wipe your tears in the name of Jesus. I bring this oppression to an end. That man holding pictures, run, come. Your breakthrough has come. Run, run, come. Stand here, where are you coming from? I'm looking at you. You are not in Zaria. From Kano State. You are from Kano State. Who is this? No, no, I'm not. I'm looking at your picture. My mom. What's wrong with her? Nothing is wrong with her. She gave me something for you. Your mom is sick. You don't know something is wrong with her. Hold on, please. If they are manifesting, just leave them there. Please, let's be fast. I want to pray for you. 
I want to pray for you. If God were to do one thing for you, what will it be? You're a wise man. I want to pray for you. God is going to lift you. Do you know that the hand of God is upon your life? Not just for like hand of God, even to tell people about Jesus Christ. There is an evangelistic grace on yes. your life. Yes. God has revealed it to you. Yes. You know it. I've been doing that. I was together in your program uh, in soup. Two days program you came at KF. Oh, you were there the, at yes, the meeting. You were out. part of the committee people yeah, there. Yeah. Because I see a man that God will use greatly in outreaches. I'm seeing signs and wonders. God will use you greatly. So I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let an anointing, something will come upon you now. I tell you, you will rise up from this night and begin to walk miracles like you held the champ. Receive that grace right now. Jesus, the same thing is happening to that person. I release that grace. I activate your spirit, man, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come. There is a spirit troubling this brother. Stand up. Come. Lift your hands. Let him go now. Out. In the name of Jesus Christ. He came to receive impartation. What you need is deliverance first. There is a, a spirit that is oppressing you. Can I talk to you, ma? Please. Where are you coming from, madam? Abuja. You believe that God is going to change your story. In the name of Jesus, you will. I want to pray for you. Please hold my hand because the Lord said I should bless you. The Lord said I should bless you. There is. I'm seeing. I'm seeing one. The Lord is showing me the vision of a lady. I'm looking at this table and I'm seeing, I'm not seeing a table. I'm seeing a lady. You are wearing like blue, a blue cloth with her tie. You are crying now, cleaning your tears. And you are asking. 
asking the Lord that I will locate you. You are inside here. No, you are wearing blue. No. No. I will pray for you. The blessing is coming. You wore something. Who is that? You tied your head with. Madam, run and come. You are the one I'm talking about. I will pray for you. Look at me. Where were you sitting? Where, was she inside here? Yes, sir. Where, is, where are you coming from? Kemi State. I'm going to pray for you. Ma, the Lord is said, I should tell you that He's bringing captivity to an end in your life this night. Captivity to an end. You believe it? Let it be yours now. Spirit. My sister, look at me. Shame and reproach. I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Hold my hands. Let shame and reproach leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I wish the rain were not falling. I set you free. In the name of Jesus Christ. I set you free by the power of God. Spirit. Mama, in the name of Jesus Christ, may the God that I serve lift you. May the God that I serve honor you. Your helper is in Abuja. We will look at you and help you and bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is someone you are from Zuru. Zuru is in Kebi. Zuru Shabala Katabalata. sound of a child and the Lord is saying a child should come now two years two years two years where is the person come call the person's name now no children two years no children we are going to pray she's not here this is your son okay you're standing for them mama why should you give birth to children and not see your grandchildren Somebody shout, no way. Shout it again, no way. The Bible 
Bible says you will see your children's children. That's scriptures. It didn't say you will see them on your deathbed. You will see them and dance and rejoice with them. Mama, do you believe if I pray for this lady now, she will come back and testify here with the child? I believe in Jesus' name. It will happen. You believe. What's her name? Her name is Adama Elisa. Adama. Adama. In the name of Jesus, become pregnant. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This one. Yeah, the medium. This is the one. No, no, I'll pray for him. This one is again. Winter. Winter. In the name of Jesus, I declare you are blessed. Mama, the pain you feel in your back sometimes. Diabetes. I will pray for you. You have fibroid. Yes. You have diabetes. Yes. You have ulcer. Yes, sir. What does this look like? You see how the devil is? Fibroid, diabetes, ulcer. A woman like this, then her own children, barrenness. Then this one. There's no speed in your life. Come and stand here. You are you that you are the gentleman. There's serious retrogression. I have to pray for you. Huh? You love God, but you are not moving forward at all. I have to pray for you. Huh? Is that true, Mama? Repeating, repeating, repeating. That's what I'm saying. It's not moving forward. Yes, sir. You believe in the message I just preached that God is a restaurant. I believe. My Jesus. Mother, it's not that you are lazy. There is a spirit that manipulates your results. You have been repeating forever. I have to pray for you. Lift your hands. You are the one I will start with first. Father, let me end now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands on your mind and I command by the power of the Holy Spirit to have the mind of Christ. Right now, over. It is over in the name of Jesus. I pray for this, your children. Pray for this. Where is he? My husband. Yes. We were from Plato State. We live in Kano. Mumta and Bokos. Okay. In Aike, she made it. Yeah, we have to pray for him. Because I'm seeing a serious spirit of delay in his life. We have to pray for him. And I'm seeing he's having a problem already with his wife. He may not tell me. This is something we need to pray for. Um, I hope you are not embarrassed. No, no, sir. In the name of Jesus, we pray for you. Mama, let me pray for you. All sad that diabetes, fibroid, and um, and and all sad. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every single one of them, help her, let it go now. The same way it came, let it go. Every house has an entry and exit. Let this be the exit of this now. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady is going to shout now under the anointing. God is removing fiber from someone's stomach. Now, this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. We are going to pray for the sick now very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone, I'm seeing this. I command it now. I command it now to happen. Those malignant groups, I command it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the power Spirit, a loud shout is going to be someone with that loud shout. That's the end of it. It comes now, never to be told. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands before we pray for the sick. I want to challenge every strange spirit that is responsible for sabotaging the purposes of God in your life. Lift your hands. As I minister deliverance to you, it doesn't mean you are possessed. No, no. The operations of demons is such that they can take advantage of mechanisms, provisions in the realm of the spirit to manipulate people. I want to pray for you. I have to do this before we start praying for the sick. Inside, outside, I want you to be ready. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Father, anyone under the influence of any spirit, please get ready and pray. I see mighty deliverance is happening. Any strange spirit in this place that is tying down the destiny of anyone. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. One, two, three. I command you to leave now. Go now. Go now. I command in the name of Jesus. By the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Cause blows of darkness that manipulates the destinies of men and sabotage 
lift your hands and pray. For time's sake, you may not need to bring them out. Just, just leave them there inside and outside so that we can call those who are sick and pray for them quickly. Shall get to see Alakata. In the name of Jesus, I declare every influence that is attached to your family, the family that is trying to rob you right now in Jesus' name. against your life in the day and in the night is speaking against you i stand here tonight in the name of jesus and i stretch my hands towards you if there is anyone inside outside under the sound of my voice who is a victim of the speakings of altars i command them to die now in the name of jesus i cause those altars they cease from functioning i cause those altars for one lady here, don't be embarrassed. You used to see physical rings on your hand. Physical rings, then it will disappear. Who is that? There's someone here like that. Please, quickly, let me pray for you. Don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for you. The Lord just gave me a revelation. Sometimes you look at your hand and you see, you think it's a dish of rings, like ring on your hand. You started seeing it in your dreams, but now, physically, sometimes you see it. Whether the person is inside or outside, except if they are under the anointing. But please, I would like to pray for that person as we pray for the sick. Don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. It's a very serious thing I need to pray for you. This, this madam, come. This lady, the lady wearing lime, come. I want to pray for you. Witchcraft comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a small child within the ages of maybe 1 to 11. Now as I'm praying, the power of God is going to come upon that child and the child will start manifesting. I'm seeing this is, this is some demonic, diabolic thing. I'm not saying the child is bad. I'm just showing you what the Lord is showing me. Father, wherever this child is, I pray for our children now. Whether it is an initiation, whether it is anything occultic, I'm, I decree and declare right now, by the power that is in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever that little child is, I command those devils to live now. Yeah. I command those devils to live now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ, yeah. I command those devils to live now. Yeah. Very quickly, we are going to pray for the sick. There are so many things God is doing in the realm of the spirit. There are so many things God is doing. There is a brother the power of God is going to come on him now, overflow to the one at the road. Please, I want you to bring him now. I want to talk to him. Overflow to. I see an angel of the Lord moving across overflow to. And the fire of God is falling on a brother. Please, I want that brother to come. The fire of God will suddenly fall upon that person. Please let him come. Carry him and, and bring him. I want to prophesy to him. I'm going to give us a prayer point. Now, while we are praying, we are going to ask people to come so that we'll pray for the sick very, very quickly because I want to be able to have time to prophesy. Remember, I spoke about restoration. I want to use time to prophesy. Now, watch this, please. Overflow one, all the overflows. Those who are sick in body, I want you to... When, when we finish praying, make your way to your various overflows and wait there. There will be people who will come 
to minister healing to you. We believe in the ministry of miracles. God has anointed us for this purpose. And by God's grace, we are not too many that we cannot lay hands on people one by one. And that's why we do that. So that everybody will have that sense of, I may not be able to lay hands on people outside, but there are men and, and women of God anointed and they will be able to also minister to you. Praise the Lord. Please make sure you are sensitive outside. I want to pray for that gentleman. That's him. Ah. Let it end now. I stretch my hands towards you. I bring it to an end. There is sorrow upon sorrow on this gentleman's life. The Lord is asking me to wave my hands. It comes to an end now. This guy is not the person. No. Just, just leave him there. At least he has received his own. Who is this one? From outside, overflow two. The person is supposed to be shouting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let this end. I'm stretching my hands. In the name of Jesus, I command the power of darkness over your life and over your family to be broken right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I breathe the life of God into you and I decree and declare that it comes to an end. I know there are many people here. There is a gentleman. Please, I don't do these things to disgrace people. But there is a gentleman here. Um, you are thoroughly addicted to taking. You know, you always hear me say that thing. What's the name of that thing? That codeine. But your own is not just codeine alone. It's plus. Whether smoke, um, some of these funny things. You are here and. You are tired of it, but you cannot stop. Please, where are you? Please don't waste our time. There's a gentleman that I need to pray for. Seems to me like that person is outside, inside. Please, if you are here, don't be embarrassed. I want to help you end this. I know there are many people, but there is a specific person God is talking to me about. Let's just flow as the Holy Spirit to stop him, please. That gentleman, I want you to come out here, and I want to lay my hands and end it. You are tired of it, but you can't stop. No matter what you do, that's what you spend your little money on. And this thing is crushing your life and destroying your destiny. Where are you? Let's appreciate it. Hallelujah. Listen, look at me. Jesus said, he who does not have sin should cast the first stone. When we call people like this, we don't condemn people. I love you with all my heart. The meaning of my name is the way to love. I love people. You look at these gentlemen, you can see the way their lives are. You see how disorganized they are. This is the devil. If we don't pray for these people, this gentleman one day will become a father. It doesn't matter. I prophesy for one is for all. Come and join them. I want to pray for you now. Please, one minute. If you are if you are still thinking about it, just remain there. But you are saying, man of God, I'm tired of this thing. You have to help me. Quickly join them. God gave a word for one, but I'm praying because we have to pray for the sick quickly. Some of you, nobody led you into it. It's a spirit that just pushed you into this thing. You love God, but this thing is killing you. I salute your courage. I don't know if I would have had the courage to come out. I salute your courage. Come. Let, I think we should honor them. Come on, Koinonia. Apostle, does it matter? Of course it does. Of course it does. Of course it does. When I start praying, please don't come out again. If you are still coming, I want you to rush and come. Male or female, I don't care. Whether you are a male or female, it doesn't matter. I, I, I perceive that there are even ladies, male or female. Jesus is setting us free. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about it. Please come and stand quickly. Male or female, Koinonia, celebrate them.
still coming. Let's give them one more minute. Since God is already talking to them now, let's just take advantage of the anointing here. Apostle, I don't take it all the time. Still join them. You take it. The most important thing is that you take it. Even if it's not all the time, you take it. Join them and let God help you. Look at me, brothers and sisters. I'm your friend. I love you with all my heart. Like I said, you may look at these boys. Please, let me give a disclaimer. Hold on, Mike. Be careful when you look at people's children and just point and think they are bad. These people need help. I interact with these people all the time and they will tell you they don't like it. It's a spirit. Some of them, nobody took, got them into all of these things just by themselves. Some of them had dreams. Some of them had strange encounters. But my Bible says, God bless you. Don't be ashamed. Come and join. Please give them room. Honestly, let's, let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. Let's let this happen. If you are joining, come. The Bible says... For this purpose, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy. That this, this, you see, this smoking and drinking thing is a terrible thing. You carry cough syrup, snuff it till you are almost dying, pass out and come back again and still do it. And then others sell that, that leaf that they tie. You collect it, smoke it and all of that. I want to pray for you and I want to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your coming out here does not make me better than you in any way. Are we together now? We are only, we are only benefactors of the grace and the mercy of God. I'm agreeing with you. Most people complain. Most people gossip about you. I'm not gossiping about you. I want to help you. Koinonia as a family loves you. Now listen, let me challenge all of you, please. After this prayer, huh? all of you are automatically members of prayer department for the next one month. You are welcome to prayer department for the next one month. Praise God. So, this is how we do it here. I won't deceive you that once I just pray for you, you go back and meet those friends. They will laugh at you and laugh at me and say forget about them. And then before you know it, you will go back into those things. One of the laws of of influence is atmosphere. You open yourself to an atmosphere and destroy you. So after I pray for you, um, ushers, what will happen is you can get their names and their details. We we'll forward it to the um, prayer department and then we'll keep following up with you from there. You need to keep praying. You need to keep building your spirit. You need to be taught the word of God. And by God's grace, we're helping you. Some of you here, will be doing what I'm doing some years to come. You will hold this mic in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you here, the ladies, you may be the wives of great men of God, evangelists and apostles. There is no body, there's no such thing as hopelessness. To him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Stretch your hands, saints of God. If you are a mother here, stretch both of your hands. If you are a father here, stretch both of your hands. And say, use them as a point of contact. Whether your children are small or, or not, use them as a point of contact. We pray for you. We are praying for you now. That the power that is responsible for this living will end. I make contact with you. somebody outside. I may not ask you to come. You stole a phone on Thursday. Still with you. Go and return it after this service. Go and return that phone. You love God, but stealing a phone to sell it and causing trouble for somebody is not the way it happens. God can help you and God can bless you. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. If I've not touched you, just let me know and I'll lay my hands on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you. I command that spirit to leave you. I command that devil to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that devil to leave you. I cause. Oh, you are 
are standing in for your brother. Where is he? What a wonderful lady. In the name of Jesus, I use you as a point of contact. As it's happening to you, let it happen to you. And hold on, don't go. Ah, okay, you are directing them. Okay. We decree and declare. Have I prayed for you, gentlemen? In the name of Jesus, all of you are my friends. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we break this addiction from your lives. Join me and say amen. I pray for any association that will not let you serve God. I command those associations from today. Let there be a dissociation between you and them. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Let's appreciate them very quickly. Now, we are going to begin to pray. Have I prayed for them? Have I prayed for you? This guy, you are going to be a man of God. This brother, this gentleman, bring him. This young man is going to be a man of God. Hold my hands. You need guidance and mentorship. There is a call of God upon your life. Huh? That we we and whatever it is that is stealing the call, we cause it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Self time in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every challenge in my life must come under the authority of Jesus tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Those who are seeking body, I want you to come right now. Those who are seeking body, overflow one, two, three, inside. to bring the healing power of God to people and we're very happy we'll continue to do it some of you are standing for your loved ones God has made this place a, a solution center and we honor him for it now please look up we're going to do two things very quickly um, overflow one you can go to your projector stand overflow two your projector stand overflow three and every other one four just join them somewhere there. Someone will come to pray for you now. Praise the Lord. While they are doing this, how many of us came with our prayer request? Hallelujah. Now, what I want you to do very quickly, those online, you can post it online and uh, we're going to connect with it by faith. If you have not written your prayer request or you've not written for your loved ones, do it quickly. The ushers are going to be waving the, a basket. Please, let's do it orderly. Just wave your prayer request and they'll locate you. You'll drop it there and we'll bring it to the altar while we pray. Very quickly. Praise the Lord. Pastor Ejimi will be outside, overflow one. Pastor Ejimi and Pastor Femi, overflow one. He's going to be praying. Pastor Alpha, you'll go to overflow two. Um, together with Mike. Mike, you'll follow him, overflow two. Overflow three, Benga, and Promise. Two of you will be at overflow two and uh, overflow three and any other overflow there. Praise the Lord. We'll do it that way. Father, together we release a corporate anointing for miracles, signs, and wonders. We decree and declare right now that as we begin to minister to God's people, do a quick walk. Let incurable situations go. Let cancers go. Let HIV go. In the name of Jesus Christ, anoint everyone, oh God, that you are going to be using to lay hands on these people and let there be dramatic testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, God bless you. Please, let's go very quickly. We have, let's try to see how we can cover this in 15, 20 minutes. Are we together now? God bless you. Lord, thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Worship team, you will help us. Bless us in Jesus' name. Please accept, listen. Please accept the people laying hands on you, ask you. You don't need to tell them what is wrong with you. Just stand by faith. Praise God. The prophetic is at work. If there is need to prophesy or talk to you, just receive by faith. It doesn't mean we have to touch the area. Just believe by faith. You go and check yourself or call your loved ones.
worship team. I appreciate us for our patience. We're going to pray now. Please accept we are under the anointing or you are pregnant or something like that. Maybe you are weak. I want us to stand and stretch our hands. Those outside, I know they are still praying for you. Just connect by faith. Hallelujah. This is not a ritual that we do. This is a revelation that God gave and an instruction that every miracle service we receive the requests of God's people. No matter how we try to reach everyone, we are constrained by time. And um, so we are presenting it to the Lord. These are the things that attempt to say Jesus did not die. These are the things that attempt to say the work of the cross was and is a lie. So we bring them before him and we say, Lord, these are the obstacles that stop the revelation of your victory from being established in our lives. And we trust this fire to descend upon them. Stretch your hands by faith. Stretch your hands by faith. Believing. Believing. I want you to pray and say the request I'm dropping here is the last one. The last time I will be dropping this request. Please pray. There will we still have more, please? Those online, this is the time you connect with us. Those outside, you can stretch your hand to your, your projectors. God is doing miracles now. God of wonders. Jabala. Let the angel of the Lord pray. Now arise, oh Lord. in the name of Jesus. Those who have been assigned unto death by reason of this prayer, they are delivered from death. Those who have been assigned unto failure by reason of this prayer, they are declared a success. Lord, turn around age-long captivities. You declared unto us in this miracle service that you are bringing restoration. I prophesy that anointing upon this request. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. Restore, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let there be strange restorations right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to pray for you. This is the last segment. I want us to connect. Our time is gone. We'll do this very quickly. Please lift your hands as I pray for you.
this message to the people of God. Freely we have been given. Freely we receive. Said, Son of man, can this woman sleep again? And he said, Only thou knowest. And he said, Prophesy. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I decree and declare right now every dry bone, every dry situation, every hopeless situation in your life, receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Receive life right now in the name of Jesus. Everything called dead in your life, dead finances, dead relationships, dead career lives. In the name of Jesus, hear the word of restoration. I prophesy, let it come back to life now. I prophesy, come back to life now. Come back to life now. Come back to life now. Every issue that has been a lingering issue for a long time and has refused to leave your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus, let tonight be the last night you will see it. Let tonight be the last night you will see it. He said, these Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more forever. I command that you see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, that is supposed to have opened up to you and we don't know why it has refused to open till now in the name of Jesus at this June miracle service I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you I swing those doors open for you for those who are asking God for direction for the next level beginning from tonight receive encounters that give you direction outside make sure you are connecting receive encounters that give you direction in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life every gift that is not yet speaking every grace that is you is still dormant within you spiritual gifts or physical gifts I decree and declare right now I command an awakening right now I command a resurrection right now I command an awakening right now I command an awakening right now hear me Every creative ability locked up on anyone here that has not found expression, I decree and declare life to your gift, life to your ability. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. There are many people here you are not walking in spiritual gifts. Paul said, I long to see you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. I stretch my hands to you out of the abundance of help and God's grace and mercy. Something is coming upon you now. I decree and declare all nine gifts of the spirit revealed in scripture alongside others that have not been recorded at the count of three. Oh God, according to the faith of your people, let there be a distribution right now. One, two, three. Now, take it right now. Step into those gifts. I release it upon you. I open up your spirit. I open up your understanding to be fruitful towards this gift in the name of Jesus. I declare upon you the mantle of favor that has made the difference in the life of ordinary people. Granting them access to platforms, access to people, access to resources. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that mantle right now. Take that anointing of supernatural favor. I impart it upon your life. I impart it upon your life. Hallelujah. I pray for you right now. Everything that represents dishonor in your life. The Bible says, where thou hast been deserted, 
so that no man passes through you. You become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I speak over your life. The kind of honor that lifts you and distinguishes you above your contemporaries. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Every dying ministry here, come back to life now. Every dying business, help them, help them please. Every dying business here, destroy your prayer life so that your the fervency of your prayer life has gone down in the name of Jesus I found those calls to come back alive I found those calls of your prayer life to come back alive in the name of Jesus I pray for the spirit of revelation like never before Access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Access to the operation of the world. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. I impart upon you the gift of faith. Let it be yours now in the name of Jesus. I impart upon you the gift of faith. Capacity to do impossible things. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare one by one beginning from tonight the same way Noah opened the door of the ark and the animals started coming by themselves I command everything that should be in your life and has left you the same anointing that drew the animals one by one to the ark I command you to draw your blessings to your life now I command you to draw your blessings to your life now For the animals he just opened the door the same way you have opened the door of your destiny I command I'm saying it again I want you to believe me it doesn't take time it only takes the right word into your life I decree and declare again between now and the next month's miracle service let there be strange testimonies of restoration strange testimonies of restoration Whatever has not been working in your life right now, whether it's your academics, your marriage, whatever it is, I force it to work now. Anything called barrenness in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Whether they are here or connected by faith, I command anyone called Barry become a joyful mother of children. Become a joyful mother of children. I pray for your finances. Whatever makes this thing hard for you, I curse that spirit now in Jesus' name. I decree and declare illumination, grace to know what to do, and grace to succeed at whatever you do. Receive it in the name of Jesus. For those who are students, whether on campus, the university, or any other campus, I declare, most of you are on break now, you are about to resume. As you resume, in the name of Jesus, I put life to your academics. I command missing scripts to be found. I command wrongly calculated results to be corrected. In the name of Jesus, as you prepare to write your exams, I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. I prophesy like rain. Hear what I'm saying. I prophesy like rain from four points upwards. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone here trusting God for a job? In the name of Jesus, between now and the next 30 days, 
May the God of heaven arise and give you a job that will bring tears to your eyes. Finally, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that if you have never stood here to testify, listen to what I'm saying. If you have never stood here to testify, in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with Jesus, the firstborn of the begotten, and I command that God will give you a testimony that will be too big for you to remain on your seat. A testimony that will be too great for you to remain on your seat. A testimony too big to remain on your seat. I decree and declare the spirit of death there is a strange manifestation of the spirit of death. It always comes like a circle, looms over territory and takes the life of people. I declare, let the seal of the blood, the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family. In the name of Jesus, let the seal of the blood, the mystery of exemption be upon you and your family. I cause accidents. I cause any kind of tragedy from coming to any family in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for you. I command in a way like never before the helpers of your destiny. I speak over your life the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Even if they came before, I call them again. Thank you for lifting. go without giving an opportunity. Please, everyone stand. Any of you of those. Let's honor this altar call quickly. Help, help those under the anointing. There are people here standing and saying, man of God, I want to make it right with Jesus. Some of you gave your hearts to him, but for some reason, things began to go haywire. And you're saying, man of God, I want to return back. Some of you are yet to make this decision. Please listen to me inside and outside. Wherever you are, you are saying, man of God, if you will pray for me, I'm ready to surrender my heart to Jesus. I'm ready to start afresh or start anew. Wherever you are, I want to count five. Please, if you are coming, I want you to run. Clear the way for them. Our time is up and we have to be very, very fast. There are so many other things to do. Wherever you are, as we begin to clap for you, I count five, you should be here. Please run like there's fire on the mountain. One, those coming from outside, please, protocol, help them, clear the way for them so that they come quickly. Quickly. Two, Koinonia, appreciate them as they come. Run to Jesus Christ, overflow. One, two, three, four, everywhere, please, quickly. Three. Please double up, double up, rush, rush, run and come. We're out of time, but this is a decision that is eternal. Come and encounter Jesus. God bless you. Come and encounter the power of God. Come and have a fresh start with him. He that did not withhold his only son, but offered him freely, how much more with him shall he give us all things? Keep coming. Three. Four. Five. Praise God. If you're coming, join them quickly. Those of you here in the front, I salute you. I congratulate you. While the rest are making their way coming, please, wherever you are, run, come. Catch up quickly, quickly. Are you rushing, please? Help us so that we can be very fast. We need to attend to people after service. I'd like you to lift your right hand and say this convincingly. Say this passionately. Say this sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you died for me, you gave your life for me. It's a powerful prayer you are praying. Tonight, I've heard your word and I believe in you. I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare 
that Jesus is Lord over my life. I believe that God raised him from the dead. And I declare that eternal life is mine today. Right now, I am a child of God. My sins are forgiven. I have the life of Christ in me. In the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus, I declare your sins forgiven. I set you free now by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I decree and declare that you begin to enjoy the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life. I pray for you that you will know the Lord like never before. I declare that the power of sin, the power of the flesh, the power of Satan is destroyed completely from your life. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you have a new start from tonight and the Lord himself will continually be glorified in your life. You go forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you and thank you. A gentleman is waving his hands. I want all of you to just follow them. They'll have your details. Appreciate you on our behalf. God bless you. Appreciate them quickly. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.